All right, great. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, just like I mentioned, this is the last class uh, for SQL. Um, some of you might notice few changes. Number one, you might probably not be able to enable your video. Number two, the chat function. You can still drop your chat. The co-host and admin will be, you know, taking a look on the chat. Um, but you might not be able to drop it for everybody. And of course, uh, um, we are going to be very strict this time around as well. Um, any any unruly behavior, you know, the person will be removed from the from the from the program right away. Um, few measures have been implemented to ensure that, you know, we are we are you know doing things professionally, you know, as as professionals that we're supposed to be. Um, it doesn't make sense when somebody is coming for a program with intention to disrupt a program. Uh, or group of people with intention to disrupt, uh, because our idea is to make our program to be to have that community feel. You know, the idea is not to come and you are just sitting. Uh, the faculty cannot know if you are understanding or you are not. Um, that is not what we want to do. All our programs over the years has always have that community feel, where faculty is seeing your face, and that's why we also encourage you to enable your cameras. Faculty is seeing your face, you are seeing the face of the faculty, and all that. And at the same time, you know we are able to engage and all that. You know people are able to talk. You know so many things. All these things are that community appeal because at the end of the day, um, we, we want to. We want to we want to see how we can support our ecosystem, support our members and professionals. Um, you know, not just with training, but of course supporting them as well, so that they can, you know, they can effectively, you know, remove the imposter syndrome or the fear factor, right? When there is element of fear, you know, sometimes somebody said to me some time ago, oh, I'm shy to ask question, and I'm like, how can you be shy to ask question? Right in your place of work, are you saying you don't you don't communicate, you don't converse with people in your place of work, even if you are not working right now? When you get the job, are you not going to communicate? Right, you still going to communicate. So the first place to start is what when you have sessions like this, when you have other people looking at like you, right? Of course, professionals like you, you're able to converse, you're able to communicate. So let's feel free to do that. For anyone that have any question along the line. Feel free to drop it on the chat. The, uh, the admin will be taking a look on the chat to see if there is need to stop the, uh, the facilitator. And of course, the facilitator will be able to take on those questions. Alternatively, you can also raise your hand. You've got a question, you can raise your hand as well. And of course, uh, you know, you'll be unmuted to speak. Um, so guys, let's go through that. Um, it's not our intentional to lock down meetings. Um, it's not our intention, uh, but again, when you have few bad eggs, uh, you know, trying to disrupt things, then of course we have no option than to than to do some of this. Um, so I believe everybody here will understand, um, you know, understand with us. Um, one second. Okay, great. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it right away. Uh, Timothy, feel free to share your screen. Let's go through the assignments. And um, but before that, let me see. Is there any questions? Probably two or th two questions before Timothy gets to it. Like any question, anything whatsoever you want to ask. If you do have a question, can you raise your hand, please? Are you there with me? Okay, fine, fantastic. So let's go, Anita. Anita, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, good morning, Timothy. Good morning, Osita. My question is: I noticed that um there are several. I think I asked this in the group already, but I just want to get your idea on it. Um, there are several apps for SQL other than the Maya Zero we are currently using. And when I try to learn on YouTube, I see one popular one, my SQL, and I think they have some some um, functions that are different from what we use in Maya Zo. So I want to ask, do we need to learn all the functions in different apps or we can have just one and then any interviewer we are with, we can tell them, oh, I use Maya Zo. And so every function in that Maya Zo is what I know. Or we have to learn different apps and the different functions that are peculiar to those apps. And which app would you um, 
recommend we constantly have any time as far as the skill is concerned? Thank yeah, that, that, yeah, that's a great question. Let me allow Timothy to take that. Okay. SQL is another version of, uh, of SQL. That is my SQL is, is the SQL open source. It's not Microsoft. There's my SQL, there is Oracle, and there are other types of uh, databases that all use SQL as a syntax. So except most people that are doing open source, that are the people that most times they use the my MySQL. So, but the one you're gonna be seeing mostly in, in the office is Microsoft MM, MSS SQL, okay? That is Microsoft SQL. So that's the one that you're gonna be seeing. It's like we all speak the same English, but there are different dialects, you understand? And there are different ways of expressing things. So my SQL is a little different, but if you know my SQL is a lot easier for you to know, Microsoft SQL is for you a lot easier for you to know Oracle syntax and, and all of that, but they are basically different. So I will advise you to concentrate on MS SQL, that is Microsoft SQL, which is the one we're using. That is what most organizations are could just tell you more than like people that uses a uh, SQL, you understand the Microsoft con controls a little more than 50% all of the market. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay great. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, let's go quickly to uh, Izioma. Good morning, Osita and um, Timothy. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. So the question I wanted to ask is with regards to Power BI. I know you did mention last week that you were going to touch base on the Power BI aspects. Are we still on course for that? Okay. Yeah, so that's a good okay. question as well. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, so that's a good question. Yeah, we are having three days of uh, free tech bootcamp happening 15, 16, 17. Um, you know, initially I was thinking we can embed Power BI today, but because of time, that might not work. So on the 15, 16, 17, three days bootcamp, that is when we're going to be covering uh, Power BI uh, precisely on the first day, which is 15th. Um, I believe most of us have already registered for the Tri Tech program starting from starting on the 15th, 16th, 17th, TriTech. If you have not registered, do where to register. Uh, it's gonna be three days of tech exposition. So focus is strictly gonna be on tech. We are, we're gonna be taking things, you know, for example, um, data analytics, we're gonna unpack few things on Excel. There's gonna be some hands-on on Excel. And there's also gonna be a hands-on on Power BI. And of course, uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about Python and talk about SQL as well that you guys have done already. So do where to register for that ahead of 15th of this month. Um, then of course, that 15th, we're also going to be covering um, uh, business analysis. Then on the 16th, we're going to be covering cybersecurity and uh, talk on DevOps. Then 17th, we're now going to be taking on the other areas as well. And of course, get all your questions answers in respect to tech. Oh, I don't know which area to go into. Oh, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know if this case is okay for me to do this, blah, blah, blah. All those questions, we're going to unpack it within those three days, okay? So do where to register. Um, I will drop the link on the chat uh, in the next few seconds. So let's take the last question before we get into Okay, I just wanted to chip in something on uh, on on that Power BI. What I'm going to do is uh, at the end of this course, I'm just going to just take like 10, 15 minutes to just uh, tell you how these things all ties together. You understand in, a, in an office, the environment, you know, how, how your SQL, your your Power BI, if you are working as a data analyst, how you are supposed to use them and just tell them. And so that you, some of the principles that we have thought about here, especially data modeling, where we talk about normalization, I'm gonna mention a little 
about star schemas, that is dimensional modeling, and you begin to understand how this thing ties into into Power BI. But SQL is is basically your core your core foundation. You understand for you to independently work and interrogate data. Yeah, that, yeah, that is good. Well, um, if we, if time permits, we'll do that. If if it doesn't permit, um, that will be part of what will be covered on the fifteenth. Um, Timothy, thanks so much for that. So, um, guys, I've dropped the link on the chat. So feel free to click on that. You register. You see the program name is called Tritech, which is three days of free bootcamp. Feel free to register and be part of that three days exposition. Uh, let's go to the last question, please. Uh, Baba Laura, what is the question? Babalola is not there. Let's go to uh, Reni. Can you hear me? Uh, please, I am joining from Nigeria. And I don't know some of Sorry, Babalola, can you repeat yourself again? Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. OK. So I said um, I've actually been joining from Nigeria. So for some of the programs you have lined up for next year, uh, uh, especially the one for January, the IDAP for the data analysis uh, program, I want to believe uh, those of us in Nigeria can also join uh, because I realize that most of the participants here are not based in Nigeria. Then the benefits therein as well, I hope it's also applicable for uh, those of us in Nigeria presently. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that is fine. Uh, loca location is not a barrier, okay? Uh, across our programs. Um, we have uh, we have participants that are joining across the group. Uh, some are joining from France, some are joining from, um, uh, one second, <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, one second, just give me a sec. Um, so some are joining from Nigeria, some are joining from um, some are joining from uh, uh, France, US, UK. You know, just name it. So location is not a problem, right? Um, it's not an issue at all. So it's not a case of oh, you must be in Canada to register for the programs. But know that the programs have a fee attached to them. All the programs, so you don't think they are free. Except SQL is a very free program that we are offering at the moment. For the other programs, you need to complete the form, expression of interest, and the program team will send you all the details you need. Um, um, if you didn't receive anything from the program team, then you just send an email, right? If you go to Black Tech website, there's an email there, there's a phone number there. That phone number, you can do a WhatsApp chat, right? And the team will respond through WhatsApp or send an email, they will also respond through email. So those are the things as well you need to, um, you can do as well. So, but in terms of location, it's not a problem. Um, so Lenny, the last person, please. Lenny, go for it. Is Rennie there? Okay. Let's uh, Fula take your, your, your space. Fula, go for it, please. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah. I just want to thank you for this uh, program. I do appreciate it. In fact, it has it has an a good positive impact on my job. Oh, Actually, lovely. I'm a business intelligence, senior business intelligence specialist. I'm using SSIS and uh, SQL. So I just said, let me join. I, I would do at least one thing or the other I will gain from this program. That is why I joined. And then I realized that there's some things that I didn't even know that we mentioned in this program. So I used them in my project. Yesterday, my boss now told me that, Fola, you have improved a lot. I was so surprised because of what I've gained here that I applied in my job. So that's why I just want to appreciate you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. And um, quick one, Fola. Uh, can you hear me? 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll need just like four testimonials, four testimonials <laughs> from, from those from those that, that have participated from this program and found it valuable. Four testimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, could you could you send an email to my team so that my team will contact you? your email and phone number if you are open to just two minutes video testimonial. Uh, if you send the email, they'll contact you with the next step. We would love to we'd love to hear good news like this. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh so please register for the track three uh free three days um tech boot camp. Okay. Uh December 15th to 17th. So I've just dropped the link right now again. I'm sharing again because I discovered that I was actually responding to someone. Somebody chatted me privately and I was responding instead of to everyone. So if you look at the link, the chat box now, guys, everybody, you see the link, click on that, then you see the program, TriTech, three days free bootcamp. Make sure that is the one you are choosing. Then of course, it takes you to a page where you register uh, to be part of it. Uh, Timothy, let's feel free to, because of time, um oh. let, let, let's let's kind of get into the into the into the assignment okay and at some point we'll pause and take more questions okay thanks everyone okay uh, okay all right thanks a lot sister for for the okay the way we're gonna go through today is uh we're gonna go through first is the assignment okay First is the assignment. We were gonna just review the assignment. Then we just introduce one or two new new concepts. And then I'm gonna take questions and uh, review some of the things that we've been taught and uh, take questions. And, and then lastly, I'm just gonna give you what I had wanted to do, but it wasn't really possible for me to to do that was, I needed to just run through some of the analysis that I was doing, but it's not just running through the analysis I was supposed to have uh, to to see the data, you understand, and, and, and you know, company policies, you couldn't, you couldn't get out and learn anything, you know, that you're, but I'm just gonna just give you some real life experience of uh, what it takes to be an analyst and some of all of the things I have done the past one week, the past two weeks, and just sequentially just tell you if you're faced with such things, how you're gonna really get to tackle them. So that is how we are gonna move. So I don't know how many people that, uh, that try the assignments and if you could just, if you could just all on the chat box. Okay. I don't know how, what is the process with the chat box now? Okay, that people couldn't chat. Okay, but if you could just give us a little thumbs up to just say an indication of how the assignment went to, so that we, we can just, look at thumbs up thumbs down if you had difficulties with it and we're just gonna see they have thumbs down on teams no there's no need for thumbs down timothy let's let's just go ahead go ahead okay. what you can do can okay. you do the control plus uh to increase your screen control plus then we can just get straight into the assignments and guys, for I can learn anything yet. Oh, okay, cool. For those that are just joining for the probably for the first time, so again, guys, um, this this was um, a four weeks program, and today is the last day for the for this second cohort. So if you are just joining, then you have to exercise up some patience, right? Um, listen, understand what is going on, and of course, you can plan yourself and prepare for the next cohort that is going to happen sometime in the in the end of January or sometime in February. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, all right, all right. okay. So moving just straight into the assignment. Okay, I, I asked the question to just say, how many entities do not have an email? All right, and, and that was just a, and I gave you a hint of the tables to use. So in that assignment, I just wanted you to, to demonstrate 
how to use the the accept functions and then the aggregate function which is count okay and we and we just said so i'm just gonna let me just bring that out okay so basically All right. Okay. I did give you two hints. I gave you the table's names as a hint, and the table name I, I gave you as a hint for for that is the is the business entity person dot business entity, and then the other one was person dot email. So Timothy, when I say Timothy, I, Timothy, can you do the control plus, please? Just find your screen a little bit, okay? Thank you. Yeah, this this okay. Thank you. So so what I like I wanted you to do is to look at if I say I wanted to know, you understand the the entities that does not have an email address. So the entities are identify with the business entity, all right? And then the email address is sitting on this table that is called a person's or, or uh, that is uh, on this table that is called person's email address. So once you use an ex accept function, you'll be able to see how many business entities does not exist on the email address okay and if you if you run that let me just connect to my s okay if you run that just one second if you run that you're gonna see it tells you that there are that there are 805 that doesn't have that address. What I, I could do is, I use the temporary table to just put those entities in there, all right? I can, I, I can actually run this whole thing as in one statement, but most times I just try to just break it down for you, for you to just understand them. And then you just need to understand the meanings of the words because before you start using, using statements, because I can just put my count and, and I use them as one code. So now that we have text that we have created, if I say select all from text, which is a timetable that I have created. It is gonna give me all the whole business entities that does not have an email. If I take this 92, for example, and I come in here and I say, we are as a business entity equals that. If I run this on the email table, you see there is no email coming out from it because I have just said, show me all my whole business entities that does not have an email. And it has given me everything that is in here. So if I query everything that is here and I check them on the email address using their business entities, you're not gonna find any email address with this place. This is a kind of question that will just come in and we just want to run a campaign and we need to send that emails to all our customers. And then you as a data person should be able to say, yes, we're going to run this campaign, but not all our customers have their email addresses. So you'll be able to highlight it to just say, okay, most things we, we do in, in data analysis, we just try to bring the thing into percentages. You, you can say out of uh, 10,000 customers or business entities we have, 
about 800 does not have a about 800 does not have email address you now say 800 divided by 10,000 and you'll be able to get a percentage number of what does not have and then you'll be able to say so 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 percentage does not have email address then business begin to understand how effective that campaign will be if we don't have people on their email and a business decision can now be checked to just say how are these data captured and then we can now say okay can we go back to the people that captures our system that captures our record or start putting constraint or start putting validations on the email to force customers to actually put their email so that is how all of these whole things links up so once i have those numbers on the temporary table i have created i will now be able to do this and i'll count it and you are actually going to see that entities with that email is 805 you understand i have just used an layer so that when somebody looks at this 805 it will actually make sense to him to just say these are entities with our emails you understand the person will just know okay this is the record for entities with our email okay i don't know if that makes sense to all of us any question i see people raising their hands um do you want to take question on this yeah I just wanna okay see. okay so let's take like two questions on this um jonathan go for it uh the question i want to ask because i was not so clear can you hear me yes i'm hearing you okay the question i want to ask is this i ran the query twice i first of all did uh, select business entity ID, blah, 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 from business entity, except the second query, except, except the second one. And then I got the, the, the business entity IDs that, we, that are not found in the other table. And then I ran uh, the intercepts. And then I got the answers for both. Then I did a count for the except, I did a count for the intercepts. And then I did subtraction for both answers so that I could present in this form. And then I did an alias. I don't know if I'm clear. Okay, okay. But yeah, how you went through the whole lot of things about this. I would went have through the lot of process to get my no answer. Friends, to just get your answer. You no, know, it's not scalable, yeah. but I couldn't think of a better approach. No, uh, it is fine. If you get the answers, uh, you got your answers right. What you now do is most times you write queries the first time we get the answers that we want. We now go back to those our queries to begin to optimize them, to begin to see, okay, now I have this answer. Can I try this thing and get the same answer? Can I try this thing and get the same answer? You now begin to play around with it until you now found a more efficient way of doing it okay okay yeah but nobody writes the same code and and it becomes exactly the same i can give somebody else this code to to give me the same answer he's gonna give me the same answer but he will go through other processes to to do that but at the end of the day as you master the skill you begin to now master more efficient way of of doing this okay all right so, so so excuse let me one last thing okay so what i did i got two zero seven 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 no. four and then no, i got no. one nine nine seven two no, i did no, i did subtract from no and got the yeah, 805 okay yeah you got the 805 okay so how you first said which ones that are in there and which ones that are not, not there, there are you are you I subtract? have subtracted it okay it's a long process like i said okay but it's fine thank you okay all right quick question. You. you're welcome let's go to miriam miriam what's the question is miriam there yes hello can you hear me yeah go yes. for it please okay 
I still can't get the whole answer because actually did the, um, did the whole stuff the way Mr. Timothy was doing it, but I'm getting 14, so I don't know why. We're getting 14. Yes. Okay. For you to troubleshoot this that we are going to do, okay. Okay. I, I, I will first, if you need to troubleshoot it, I'll first of all tell you to check how many records, all right, we have. Okay. Okay. The, on your own data. Okay. 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 Just, okay. Sorry. Just check how many records that you have from person dot person uh, from person business entity. Okay. You see, it is gonna be two o seven. Just write it down. If it's two o seven, and uh, and mine. If it's 207 that you're okay. getting, and then my email, and my email is 1916. If you are getting the same thing, yeah, okay. then you know that you are you are wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know that you just need to check something. And another thing before I will still proceed. Like this question you have asked me. In the industry, it is not just that your code is running that makes okay. everything all right. The data needs to talk and needs to be aligned with what the business is doing. Okay. Okay. The business needs to talk. You understand? A, a typical example, I was just doing something within the week. I needed to just count and I needed to bring data of people that their car was repossessed, their it was set up for, for repo and a few other criteria. There is somebody that is doing that job. He knows how many cars we auctioned this week. So it doesn't matter if your query runs exactly right. But the thing okay. is at the end of the day, your record needs to say, we auctioned 20 cars and your record says it was 20 cars. Okay. This okay. is how much we receive. This is how much we receive. Your data needs to talk to the business and be correct. So it's not just that your code needs to run. It's essential that your data, which is the fundamental thing of your data to be right. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you very much. No. All, right. All right, great question. Let's go to Balogun. Balogun, you have a question? Go for it, please. Good evening, everyone. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Um, I ran it this exact way you also ran yours, but I'm I'm getting errors here. The same code, the same code, the same way you wrote it, but it, I'm it getting is not it is not the same way I wrote it, and, and it's not the same. Just apply your pair of eyes and you will see it is not the same thing because if you've written the same thing, you're not gonna get an error because I didn't get an error. Okay. Once and you I... tell your, okay, hold on, listen. Okay. If, if somebody writes a code and you're gonna see this in an office space, somebody can write a code and that code is working and you run it and you're having an error. Just, Cool down, apply a pair of eyes. You understand? Don't think there's something or that magic. Just apply from your pair of eyes. Start from line one and you check it. You understand? And sometimes if I have written this, you can just run this first one. This first one alone will run. And then like what we have told you, what we have taught you before, if this first one has run and is fine, you now know that, okay, I need to drop this table. You can now go back to those statements I have been doing to just say, drop this table. And then you run the, the other path. 
you understand yeah in as much as you're writing this code and i'm gonna try and see as i will just be putting it you need to learn how to troubleshoot your code and as we have said in the last class if there is an error look at that syntax look at that error that error message is talking to you check what is telling you you understand and then you go to that line of code and you look properly well and you're going to see how what the issue is mm -hmm. yeah uh, okay thank you very much let's take it line by line my brother um uh, balogun are you there yes sir can you spot out what the error is uh yeah it says invalid object name Person okay what so so can you so you can, are not you... in the right database if it says invalid object name is either the table name is typed incorrectly or you're not on the right database those are okay. so check if you are in adventure works 2019 and check if you spelled the name of the data that i have mentioned the name all of the table check if it was spelled correctly that is why i'm a lazy person I, I rather than typing this long thing and i do it a, 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 a typo error i will go in here and i look for that table I, I will look for it and i'm just gonna drag it and drop it and i know that i won't okay. make a spelling okay. error have you yes. sorted it out now yes i have yes uh, okay 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 <laughs> Okay, fantastic. All right, awesome. Uh, so let's go to Wumi. We'll take Wumi, then Timothy. Let's move to the next one after Wumi, please. Thank you very much. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. All right, thank you, Timothy. Uh, let me first of all say thank you so much for this. This particular question took me like two hours, you know, to crack. Each of the questions this week took me two, three hours but I'm glad that I went through it. Looking at what you are doing and seeing that I got it correctly, it's enough joy for me. My question is that, um, must I create a temporary table before I get the 805? This is what happened to me. Everything that everybody else had said happened to me, actually. But I kept looking for how to get answers. So as I was hitting those um, grid logs, I was looking at the syntax error that was reported. And any keyword I pick from it, I pick it, I go straight to Google. I say, how to do this? How to navigate that? You know, So Google is very good. It gives, before you even finish typing, and I type like a, like, a, like a dummy. I say, how can I get this on SQL? You know, I type it out like that, and then it gives me option. I read, then I come back to come and apply. And I saw that I eventually got it. Now, uh, Timothy, my, my exact question is that, when I first ran it, like every other person did, I got a 2777 record, right? I kept doing everything and I was getting exactly the same numbers that you have displayed here until I created a temporary um, table. And even to create the temporary table, I made a mistake of inserting temporary table in the first row. So that is select business identity into um, as test from so, so, so. I went into the second row as well and did the same thing and put as test from until I got an error, I went back to Google. Google corrected me. I can't have test table on both, you know, codes. Yes. Then I corrected it. So most high in this kind of situation, you know, the only thing that helped me to trace my step was that in the hint you gave, it showed the table. So I read the table very well. I looked at it critically. It showed the table that you gave. And then I could see on it temp table. That is under your hint where you have the SQL keyword, except an aggregate function. So I saw temp table. That was the way I could retrace my step. I said, oh, then it looks like I must create a temporary table. So that's when I went back to create a temporary table and I got the answer. But before then, I did the accept straight. I didn't get the 805. So must if we meet this kind of situation, must we first of all create temporary table? Thank you. I have similar questions on the second question, but when we get there, thank you. If so I much. remove this timetable and I run it, you're going to see it's going to be 805. Okay. If I do this, it will give me, if, you, if I stroll down to just look say at the message, see, yes. see the message, it gives me 805. 
So the timetable only will help me because I wanted you to, to use an alias. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. I wanted you to use an, an like alias. And that was why I gave you that screenshot. You understand to oh, just say okay. the, the idea is just to, to just try to make sure that you use a, a whole lot of other things, trying to get exactly what I have told you. You understand? So whichever way you can do it to get it exactly like this, it will help you to try a whole lot of other things. That was the essence. Okay. I'll go back and look again. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for All that. Right, my please. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Something. Great question. Yeah, go ahead, Cecil. But before yes. that, Cecil, um, the lady that spoke the last time, I, I love the resourcefulness you have shown. And this is really, you know, when we talk about tech, or we talk about learning these things, that is really what we are talking about. You need to show resourcefulness, right? You, you, you must not behave like a one-way traffic. No. You are learning. There are other tools and resources. We have shared W3 school here where you can even go and practice more. Look at what she was saying. She had the error. She went into Google, type it before, before even she finished typing. Google have shown her. What does that imply? The, whatever problem or error you think you are having, you are not the first person to have it. Somebody else have had it before, right? And resourcefulness, that is what she really exhibited by going, going. She said she spent two hours but at the end of the day, she figured it out. That is what we talk about when we say activating the coconut head. That is resilience. It's not like you just run into an error and you chicken out. That's not how to go about it. So I really want to appreciate her for that, okay? Yeah. I think that's what we well done. And another thing is we didn't go through that is some of these whole things that you have done that are so pretty, there's a thousand and one way you can actually do that but i just try to just that is why i give you hints and i give you some keywords so that you just practice some of the things that you have done in class but outside that you can there are a thousand and one ways you could always try and achieve them excellent thank you uh Cecil, you want to add something okay no that's um that's why timothy has actually mentioned the point oh, right okay yeah Okay, fantastic. Thank you. All right, Timothy, let's go to the next question, please. Okay, all right. Next question. The next question we looked at was, uh, you say, I want to name, I want the name of products, how much they are sold, standard cost of manufacture, and calculate the profit margin. I say show results according to, you say show result according to this with more. Okay, what I had wanted to say is just sort them, all right? So hint is this table is product.profit and the, the second table is a product.cost history. And I actually made a screenshot to show you so. The first thing, if you see this kind of thing, is first to first identify the columns. So you just write out the columns names, you understand. If you say select, you could just write out the columns names. Then you go to these two tables to find out where is this name coming from. You now find out that this name is coming from the product.product .product table. Okay, let's see them. Okay, you find out that you, you expand this and you find out that, okay, this name that I have said, and I've given you the two tables, you find out that the name is sitting on the product or product table. You find out that the list price is still here. You find out, do I have standard cost? You check. If you don't have standard cost, you now know, okay, this standard cost most likely is gonna come from the other table. You expand and you close and you go to the next table, which is called product.cost history. You open it on the columns and you look at your standard cost. Once you say this, the next thing here you're gonna see is this column has a primary key that is called 
product.product.id, you go to the other table to just see, do I have a common column that I can join? Yes, that is product.product.id, you now know. Okay, I can join between these two tables and I get my this thing. So this is similar to what we did last week, but I just wanted to now add a new thing of putting in a, a calculation linked to that. So what I, I did was bring it to just say my A, which is the product or product table. My name is coming from there. The list price is coming from there. And then the standard cost is coming here. If I say I want to see what is the what is the profit margin, what is the profit margin is this is how much I am selling it, and this is how much it cost me. You understand? So what is my profit? My profit is how much you are selling something. If you bought something, if I have produced something and it cost me ten dollars and I'm selling it at $15, what is my profit? You understand my profit is minus that from this. And if you even now want to go to, to more extent, you can actually now calculate to now just say, this is my profit margin. You understand, you can now say, okay, cost, you can say, this profit margin divided by cost, you understand, you can begin to get the percentage of your of your profit margin. So those are some of the things that you can play around. But that's why I gave you this screenshot to just so that you'll be able to know that, OK, this profit margin will be list price, uh, will be list price minus standard cost should be able to give you your profit margin. And then you order them in a descending order so that you'll be able to know which of them that you're making a little more money from. You understand? So that you know, at the end of the day, this whole data we are writing is just business. You want to see the, the products you're making more money so that you can stock up on, on those ones. And even at that, if you're making more money, there's more profit margin on some does not necessarily mean that that is where your profit is coming from. You now still need to go check as a data analyst, what is the volume? Are we selling this product? Because one product can be making you more money, but you rarely sell them, you understand? Then you, as a data analyst, you now need to go check the volume, not just checking the volume, where are we selling this product? So those are the things you, as an analyst, will be able to do is just to wear your business sense. As an analyst or as a data person, your first thing is to find out how your company does business. If you understand how your company does business from end to end, it is a lot easier for you to know how to investigate and to answer questions. You understand? So it's not just about the data, it's trying to understand how your company does business. Looking at, at like this example, we sell products mounted or save uh, mounting hundred silver, and we sell other products. As an analyst, what do you want to do is where are we making more money and where are we making loss? Which products are we making more money? Which one are we making loss? Where are we making them? What percentage of the loss? You understand, so that you can now begin to advise business to just say, this is where we're making the loss. Are we making the loss at the end of the month or beginning of the month or which period are we not making sales? You understand, why are we not making sales? You begin to interrogate the data to be able to just say, you know what? We are actually selling, we are shipping winter clothes the same time not considering that probably in Sahel Africa, our winter here is their summer, and their summer here is their winter. You are shipping it at different times of the year. You understand might be affecting your sales. You understand. So those are the things that you, as an analyst, need to just look beyond the data, interrogate the data, and then provide solutions. Say based on what this data is saying. I really think that we should do this. And that's what we begin to talk about, actionable insights. You understand that business can begin to make decisions on. So don't 
don't panic. Don't look at data as SQL. First of all, understand the business. Understand why are they asking that questions. Everything translates about how business will make money. Whatever thing they are doing is trying to just make money and generate revenue. So you need to understand how do they make money. It's important for you to be able to answer. So looking at like this, what we have just done was we calculated this and we now know, okay, we are making more profit margin on the mountain saver 38, the second and the same amount we are making. So we can actually now say these uh, had the mountain hundreds. You understand uh, some of our good products that, that will make a little more profit profit margin, you understand? So you can begin to just group, subgroup this thing into smaller buckets and uh, uh, all of that. So I don't know. There's many hands up. I don't know if it was the one that was up before or new ones. Okay. Um, so let's quickly go to Wally. Wally, this thing, please go for it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Osita. I have I, I've got an answer to the question, so I will not just bother. Okay. Fant it. Fantastic. All right, let's move quickly to Jeremy. Jeremy, go for it, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, my question is this. Um, looking at the the first table, um, I could see that we have from standard cost in the in the first table and also in the second table as well. And when I try to view the standard course um, oh, with their primary oh, keys. Let me just check. You say in the first table, you have standard cost. Yes. Okay. All right, all right. I didn't notice that. Okay, all right. Go on. Yeah, so um, you have it in the first table, you have it in the second table. Okay, so if we, if, and I check the the values from the first table and the second table. I try to compare them. They are not they are not of the same value. Now, if we are writing this query, how do we know or how does um, SQL know that the particular value that we are picking from, we are actually picking the right value from the right table? No, this okay. If just looking at this, all right. Just looking at, at this. This one is a product cost, and this one is a product cost history. If I look at this, what it tells me is that here has a right product cost, all right? And this one is a combination of the history. So what I might now do is I'll begin to look at the start date and the end date to see, okay, this standard cost, this was the cost at this particular time. This was the cost in January. Then okay. probably in in June, it has a, a, a different cost. You understand? So this one contains the history, and that is where you are looking at the start date and the end date. So if I'm if I have interrogated this thing, if I have noticed yeah. what you you picked up now, what I would have just done, I will start looking at the end date. If the end date is null, that means that cost is still the current cost. But if the end date is populated with a, a, a data, that means it's no longer the end date. So I will query this data to just see this end date and the start date, because if it gives you start date and end date, as a data analyst, I will now begin to know, say, okay, this cost, standard cost, will probably have a time for when this is a standard cost and when it ends. And then the same product ID will have another standard cost. So if I look at this, okay, if I look at this and I just say select all from that. Okay. And when I see, you see, you see, just looking at this data, you're gonna see that this product ID is 707. It started on the, the standard cost was $12. 
and he started on the 20th of, uh, 2011, May 31st, and he ended in 2012, May 29th. The new one started the next day, 2012, May 30th, and it ended 2013, 2013-05-29. Then this one started. This one is the current one. I will not check. The standard cost on this product history, I will not say will be where end date. It's not. Okay. It's not the keyword. And I will not say like this. And you're going to see this will no longer be repeating values because this will be just the current, the current end date. This is some of the things that like it all starts gradual, but I'm happy that you picked it out. If you picked it out as an analyst, you now just look through the data to just say, okay, what is really happening here? Okay, so just looking at that, immediately I saw the history and I opened it and I just saw start date and I like end date. I actually know how what this data will look like. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, so much. A great um, clarification there. Orisha, Orisha, go for it, please. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Okay, so I do understand where I did this thing, I actually got a ball. I don't understand why you put this description in the query and what the relevance is. Which description? There's a, this line four. What's it for? Line four. The, no. I had wanted to add it. It just commented out. Anything I put here is commented. Yeah. I had wanted to just add it for, as a matter of whole fact, that I wanted to make you people do a whole lot more join. But I just says, okay, let me just keep it simple. So I commented it out. So I didn't follow up through with it. Okay. So it is not oh. part of the code. Okay. Any okay, place then. you have this, it will turn green. It's not part of the code, you ignore it. Good. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, great. So let's go quickly. Indi Frike. Indi Frike, are you there? Yes. Okay, go for it, please. Make it fast, please. All right, Um. thank you, Timothy. Okay, so from my first, number one, the first assignment question, Um. I couldn't create a test uh, table. What I did was I just, um, I did select count as then I entities without emails from, then I put my my query, I put everything into a bracket, then I ended it with temporary and it still gave me the answer. Is that, is that correct? As long as you get the answer, that's what business wants. You understand, it is only when the volume of data begins to increase, then you begin to have performance issues if your queries are not properly uh, properly tuned. And that's the places we start looking at indexes and how you're doing your joins. Because if, you're, if it's a large table, your join has to be on index columns, you understand, and all of that. But as you progress from SQL, you, you are gonna get to that. But for now, what is important is that you'll be able to go through the exercise and you'll be able to get the result at once. Like an example I have said in the office, if they want their number of cards that are sold, the business are not gonna be asking you, show me the query that you ran. All they just want is you sold 20 cards and you are reporting 20 cards. You understand? It's only your fellow developers you understand there's something that we used to do when we're at empty and we do what we call peer review. You understand you write your code and you give it to your colleague to peer review it. Your colleague looks at it and just say, okay, you know what? You could have done it like this. You understand it will run faster and a few more, uh, less more lines of code. Uh, 
but at the same time, the most important thing for the business is the accuracy of the data you are reporting. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then All for right. the second. Sorry, sorry. Let's take the next person. Sorry, do freaking. Okay. Uh, let's move quickly, guys. Uh, let's go to Tony. Tony, please go for your question. Yeah, uh, there's something I I just found out. It's in, when we are writing statements, we use we use underscore in between for all statements so that it could run. Underscore, which underscore yeah. or that? profit margin? I saw I saw underscore. Uh, yeah, line eight, order by profit margin. Okay, no, the profit margin. I just want to make it readable. I can actually make it like the I can actually put a space in between. But if I put a space, the system will think it's two words. So I need to start putting a square bracket get in here you understand so that it's readable okay you just don't want to put profit margin as one word you just want it to be readable so that is that is what i have done and um in addition the no it's uh, it's morning about this as two words so that is why I actually will put an underscore on it. Okay, oh. that's yeah. why I, I will put an la underscore so that uh, the system looks at it as as one word. Or, or alternatively, I would just say profit margin, but I just put an underscore so that to just make it more readable. Oh. Then secondly, I discovered during one during the program uh, during my uh, where I was writing the program um, the queries that you could actually use other names instead of test if you want to have yes yeah you can you you can use you can call it a you can call it b you can call it alpha I said it the other day in class you oh. understand you can call it you. anything you want. Fantastic, fantastic, excellent. So let's take the last question for this, then we'll move to the next one. Fola, go for it, please. Fola, are you there? Hi, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I actually ran the code, the query exactly the way Timothy did, but I joined on standard cost. So I guess from your explanation, when the other guy asked, my results actually gave me multiples, like um, I had duplicates information in my result. But I was not thinking that uh, because it didn't mention product ID in the in the assignment, is it compulsory that we use primary key to join? Correct. That is okay. your point of join is that is what the primary key and the foreign keys are. It's okay. your joint okay. condition, okay. no okay. other thing. All right, thank you very much. That's very clear. All right, All right. fantastic, excellent. Okay, great. Let's Let's make progress. Thank you. Okay. All right. So today I'm gonna just be looking at the. Okay. We have moved through quite a couple of days in the past. All right. I just. I just added one one slide as a guide to show slide here. Okay. This slide that is in here is just uh, in uh, in part B, I will call it a decomposition tree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just to just uh, I'm gonna share this slide again. It's uh, it's what you have before, but I only added this particular slide, all right, where you can look at some of these keywords and just try and at your own time, type them. There are some that you might not need to do, which is, which is this one that is called the data control language, the grant and the, and the revoke, those are just, keywords that your database and administrator uses to grant you access okay you can just take them and just go through them as keywords most we have done we have done group by having clause 
order by de descending we've done alias inner join i'm just gonna play around with the left join right join and uh, and outer join today these are average the same way we do the count is the same thing they are all aggregate functions we've done all of these the less than greater than equal to and all of that we've done and all you understand not between works the same way you say between this date and this date like in any all exist i will probably touch them today these are just the create statement create database create table create view author tables drop tables truncate you just truncate whatever that is in this table so what i will advise you guys is uh take this you understand take this and then try and play around with each of these keywords each of these keywords that is in there like my sister said google them you understand we have looked at the select insert update delete we have looked at the commit drawback save point we have not looked at but that is just to just say if you're running a, a transaction and uh, you want to save it at a particular point you understand you can just say save point and then if it rolls back you can call the transaction can continue like that but those are not the save point is not what you use very very commonly that was why okay we didn't mention it but you just see the commit the rollback the begin transaction when you commit it you're just writing into the database it's just to try and go through these uh, these different branches and these different uh, SQL statements. It's just gonna help you to like you would have covered the the very very basic syntax and every other things you you now begin to play around with it like the same way people speak in English. There are people that have idiomatic expression. There are people that are sarcastic you understand it's still the same in english word that they use but they will use it in a different way that it becomes sarcastic and that all of that so those are just how you you begin to use a whole lot of things on these uh simple statements so i'm gonna just the things uh I, I, I want us to to look at today do we, do, do we have um question three in the assignment timothy Yes. Can you can you take a look? Question three, Timothy, please. Sorry, 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 man. Sorry, I, just, I always miss this. Okay, question three. It's uh it says uh, you are required to produce a list of the names of the clients pastor and combine the person's name and the store name by completing the following code okay yeah like this one okay that was why i forgot it it is very easy all right what you just needed what i just needed is I said I want to combine. Once I want to combine, it's just a, a, a union. Okay. You if I if you say union all, it's fine. If you say union, it's fine. Union all, like we said, it removes the duplicate. If there are duplicate names there, it will ignore it. If you use union all, it it, it just combines everything for you together. Are we there? Once you just hear that you want to combine things, you understand. And I gave you, that was why I gave you those queries for you to run. And secondly, I wanted when you type them, you'll be able to ask me uh, the, the, the plus is, is what we can use to concatenate is to join two columns together and i i join it and i put a space in in, in between that you can just play around with any question on that 
Okay. So I think we are good. Do we have any question on number three? Question three. Anybody with a question? Oh, we are good. Okay, Wumi. Wumi, go for it. Thank you very much. So we're supposed to get the name and the store. This output is showing the name. Where is the store? Sorry, I'm no, the store in. is coming from the store table. I say okay. the person's name and the store name. Yeah. So I just gave you the person's name and I gave you the store name. So what I, I just wanted you to do here is just to add a union statement to just say this is how you can produce a complete list between the two of them. Okay, so not that you expect us to have a table that would show the name of a, the person name, the store name, that's not going to be the output, right? If you do that, you're going to give me the business name and the name of the store, one side. Mm -hmm. Then you do for the person, which is this one. But if I say I want to produce a complete list of all the names of our client, person and store, then you need to join them together. Okay. All right. I'll check on that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's go. Just one more question, guys. Uh, David, go for it, please. David. David, 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 we can't hear you properly. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you speak up a yes, bit? Sir. Speak up a little bit. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, much better now, much better. Yeah. What I did was when I combined the uh, select A, sense name plus the whole thing with your data, and uh, I, I, I did um, inner John sales plus store B on. Uh, I did. I did an alias, and I did business entity ID. Is equal to B. That's the second alias. Business entity ID. Then I, I did the select uh, business uh, entity ID name from sales store, and I got what I got. It's similar to what you got, but it has like now it's two ninety two. The first one is next door bike store. The next one is two ninety four professional sales and services. It didn't give me the main population like this. Okay, all right. If I have this, if you do the join to produce this, what would have happened is you're going to have two name fields. You're going to now have person's name and the store name because you cannot have two names in one, the one column, the one table because the two names will be conflicting. I have written this query for you and I say this one as name this one uh, last name if you need to combine them and you need to join them on business entity which is fine what i expect is the name will not change this one will not be person's name this one will not be business name so i don't know if you're able to do that oh, okay that makes sense oh okay thank you so much i because I, I now you know, i understand I, the names that had the two main things two different things to say one should be person's names and the other one should be the other name. Yeah, so that we identify them. Those could have been a different solution of how you could have solved it. Thank you All so right. much. Okay. All right, fantastic. Uh, Timothy, let's proceed. Let's proceed, okay? All right. Okay, so today, if some of the things I want to... I want to play around today. I'm opening this as a new query. I wanted us to start looking at uh, the the date functions. Okay, the date function. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna just run just a couple of. Okay, I want to run this code. It says select birthday from human resources in the employee. I run it, okay? And I have birthdays, all right? If I now want to, to calculate the age of 
each of these people. There is a function that we have is the date difference. Uh, the date diff. The date diff has parameters. You can calculate the date diff within a day, in months, in years. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go. We say select. And we say date diff. If I say select date diff, all right, and I open a bracket, you're going to see, it's going to tell you what interval do you want to calculate this date difference? Are you want to calculate it in days, or in times, or in months, or in years? You need to specify. I will say, yeah. It gives me the like comma. It says starting from when. I can actually say put a particular day. Let me just say I say I want to calculate from the year 2000. Okay, October 10, 31. Okay, of course I'm going to put it in a quote. Okay, or let's just say I just want to make it. Zero one. All right. That is a function that we have. That is a function that we have, and we call it get date. Okay. Let me show you. If I say select, I say get date. Just say select get date. It's going to give me today's date. It gives me exactly today's date because I'm in mean, Edmonton. It tells me it's 2022, it's 12, it's 03, it's 823, 33 seconds, 820, yes. And I need to give me to the minutes and milliseconds of today's date. So it's a function, it's there, all right? So what I did here is I says, give me the year, give me the difference in the year between this date I have specified and today's date, I can still specify a different date. But if I want to say to today's date, I'm just saying, give me the date difference between this. You can see, I did not say select from any table because why? This date is a literal value I have passed. It's not coming from a field. And the get date is a SQL function of telling me today. I say, I want to see how many years between today and 2021st of January. If I run it, it will tell me it's 22 years. If we see 2000, and 2022, it is 22 years. That is that. So if I want to calculate how many somebody's age, I will say because I have a field that is on employees table that is called birthday, which we have here, I will not change this my literal date I have passed. Then give it an input of a column name, which is birthday, and say, calculate it with today's date. Give me the year difference of it. So that year difference, that date difference, the function that we used to do that is what we call the date diff. And we say, and I say, give it a name as age, as an alias from a human employee human resources employee table so that we know when we are supposed to retire. Okay, so every month they can just run this and then they flag it to just say, these are people and you cannot just say, I can come in here to just say, we are the date div is greater than 60. It will give me everybody that is more than 60 years old so that you know, okay, my brother, it is time for you to go visit your town people. 
and contribute to your society. You are an, you are an elder. So if I run this, it will give me the year difference. If I check this, change this year to months, it will give me the difference in months between this dead, between today and the birthday. Okay. As age, I can say in months. Can say age in months. All right. So that somebody will actually know what I'm trying to do. You see, it should tell me that this person that is 50 something years old has stayed here uh, over 647 months. I can still come in here and I just say day. It should calculate the difference for me in number of days. Okay. It's a function that we have. Most times, as an analyst, if there is one thing that you need to do is uh, most reports you're going to be given. People want to see the report, what has happened over the months and what has happened in two years' time because we want to see trends. We want to compare December this year. You cannot compare the data of sales in December and the data of sales in February. It's going to be deceiving. When you say in December, we sold 10,000, and in January, in, in Feb, we only sold 4,000. That means uh, the business is doing bad. No, that's not an accurate picture. Because December is a time of giving that people buy a whole lot more thing. So to give business a better idea, we want to compare month to month. You understand? That is what we call month to month and year to year. You understand? That is what you see in general analysis. You see people talk about seasonality. If you hear that word seasonality, we are comparing a particular season <laughs> and another season. If you check, you might, as we as I work for in the car finance company, people we are paying their cars, but you find out that because of COVID, there was more repossession because people struggled financially. So you're not going to use the data during this COVID period to effectively forecast going forward. You understand because. It has happened one time. So that data will represent, if you plot it in a scatter chart in Python or in Power BI, you're going to see it is what we call an outlier. You're not going to use it to, to do anything. So most times we do things based on seasonality. Okay. So we report on a monthly basis that. Every data you need to do, you're reporting month to month. So there is this thing I have done in my office. I always run this. You have taken the bet date. Let's just say this is the sales of the month. What I have done in this code, don't panic. You don't need to learn it now, but I'm just using it to explain concept. What I've just done is, I took my, I converted bed date, converted it into seven characters so that, and then I changed the dash with a replace and made it an underscore. You don't need to cram this, but every time I run data within the company, I want to be able to present my X axis on my chart on Excel. I want to present it as the years like this so that you're going to see the year January 2021 till December 20 till uh, December so that you just see it like that. It, it gives them a, a clear view so that you're going to see my line chart or my bar chart, how it spikes up and how it's done. 
you understand so but all of that what i'm just trying to teach here that you you should uh, focus on not this code i have run now is just the functions to just say a date dip is to calculate the difference between a date and, and another one this one i have said i only have done this once and i always use it in, in the office to calculate every day field like that so that when i plot my chart it is consistent and they'll be able to see okay this is what he's reporting he's reporting data of 1969 January or 1971 08 or 1974 November the 11th. So I just took my thing, apply a little convert, apply a little replace statement, and I'm able to get it in the way that I want it. And I only do it once on every date. I just write this and I call it the period and I use it to chart like that but concentrating what we are doing today is you need to learn my emphasis is you need to learn how the date functions works because as an analyst you need to report everything in months and in years so i usually use this to just make it a whole lot easier for me to do my reporting okay then that's the diff there is another one of date part in a date, you have the day, you have the year, the month, and the date. If I'm interested in everything in 2020, I want to run my query. And I don't want to run them. My data is there. I don't want to run January, February, March, April. And at the same time, I don't, I'm not interested in 2021 data. I'm only interested in 2022. I can just say, select day part, birthday from human resources. If I do this, the year, it will tell me this. I cannot just say, we are, I can say we are, this date part year, can just say we are birthday. greater than I'm only interested in people that are born 1970, okay? If I run this, it will give me only people that are born after 1970. If I want people that are born from 1970, then I need to say equal, greater or equal to. Okay, I will say greater or equal to, if you see, they started in 1971, but if I say greater or equal to 1970, if there is any 1970 that is here, it would have given me the data. Always remember the greater or equal to is important, especially like when we discussed before segmentation. If you don't miss this, and you're not careful, you might miss a particular segment or a particular year of your data. So you always try and, and look at it. It can be less than this and greater or equal to this, but you, you just need to learn it and see and know how the greater and equals to work. It is something that we learned in primary school and it's coming back now and it will always will, will remain on the, on the data field. So if I look at this, if I look at this, you're gonna see the year of the, of the birth date. If I say I want the month of the, sorry. If I say I want the month, I will say select month. I want only the month. It should give me the month. Okay. If I, I can. Okay. If I say this. I can call this as year. I can still. I 
for this as here. And I can do this. And I want the month. Okay, the date part. I can call it as month. Okay, I can still come in here. I can still say the day. I can still say as day. To just make sure our data makes sense to us, I'm just gonna put that birth date. in here. Okay. If I run this, you see, it's, it's gonna split it for me to tell me this is the year is 1969 and the month is the first of the month and the day is the 29th. I will use my date part to be able to extract the different parts of my date, of my date fields. Okay, that is this other one. Bolanle, what's up? Can we allow <laughs> David and <laughs> ask question? <clears throat> All right, David, go for it, please. Hi, uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to ask this question. The way we create this as age and as age and months, if we want to say we're in that, are we able to do that? How can we make reference to this kind of columns that we have created as age or as year? Are we able to make reference to that as a column? Maybe when you want to use the where clause. So can you now say maybe where age on yeah. month is equal to yeah. like that? But the thing is when I can say, when you say, when if I remove this and I say, okay, hold on. And I say, we are, it's gonna be looking, if you want to apply the filter, you understand, it's gonna be looking for this as a field. And there is nothing like this as, as a field. There is nothing like this as a field. So see the arrow, you see it's highlighted all already. It tells you there is an invalid column because this column doesn't exist. The only way you can use this thing is you persist it in a temporary table or into another table, then this column will exist as a year. So for me to use that, that is where I have Applied it together as my wear clause. So that in my wear clause, it will calculate it and it's except I will just say my birthday. But if I want to only specify 170, if I say we are birthday is equals to 170, there is no birthday that is 170. So it's going to return for me a zero record. But if I want to specify that, I need to pass that function to just say, we are the date part year, it will resolve this and then be able to apply the value that comes from it. And that is the only way it's gonna give me what I'm actually looking for. Thank you. That's it. Let's go to the next person, please. Um, Shagun, you've got a question? Yes, I yes I do. Okay, go for it, please. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Timothy. I tried to run the query which you did. This your line eight. Uh, select date date diff year, the date then today's date. I'm getting error message. It's telling me conversion field when converting dates and or time with character string. And you type in these dates like the same way. Yes, 2000, oh, but I used to February 2002-31. Okay, you used February 31. Yes, yes. Okay, that is somebody's birthday, right? <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you, thank you. 
So <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Awesome. Great. All right. Let's continue, Timothy. Okay. Then the next one that I want to just mention is what we call the date name. Okay. If I click on this and I run it, it will be able to give me this date to just tell me is January, February, March, April, or May, because I'm using the date name. If I change this today, it's going to give you the the day, all of it, okay? So, boy, if I use the date name month, it should be able to bring out this information. Or basically, if there are a couple of uh, date functions that you need to be able to master to use that you're gonna find that you're gonna be using every time is the date part, is your date diff, except when you, you wanna do some other things, but there are just quite a few, a few other functions you understand that that comes from that comes from date that you can you can use okay there are just quite a few a few of them date date function that is okay we we'll mentioned the day we we'll mentioned the month you can still say the day, you can still type in something like this, select, you can still say day of this birthday. You can use them like this. You can stay past this thing as your month. They are just quite a couple of uh, of ways you can you can do that. You can still say your year like that, or you can use your date part. Those are uh, uh, things you can use. There are other ones that we have end of the month. You understand you if you have end of the month, you have date added. You can you you can say select date add. Okay, and I say I just want to give a everybody one year or add two years to their age and I'll just say birthday. I'll say birthday here so that we can make sense of Yes. Okay. We're just adding two years to their age. He's 1969. His age is uh, 1971. That is your date at if you want to add two months to it, you can just say, I just want to add two months to the to their birthday. His birthday now is going to be March 29th. So those are, are functions that you can you can use. And we can actually say is date. You can just say, you can say select 
to say is is date and I pass this bracket to just say fetch date from if I run this invalid argument for this date, okay. Just hold on. It's supposed to, okay, it's dead. Okay, let me see. Yeah. You're just, I'm just using this is date to just check if it's a, a valid date. Let's just make this one February, like my. Let me just say. It's okay. Let's see. Okay, well, this type of date is in that you have given over. That's it's not so, but uh, is in this date function, I just want to use it to just validate if it's date, if it's a proper date. This one is not a proper date and it gives me zero. If it's a proper date, it gives me one. Kiss me one. So those are just some of your date, date, date functions that uh, that you will be able to you be able to to use. Look at the date diff. You look at the date added. You look at the get date function. You look at the date parts, and you can just use them and uh, begin to manipulate it in a way that makes sense within your different environment. But like I did emphasize, everything on data, you need to know your data because we need to compare year to year, month to month. Uh, uh, if it's in Power BI, you begin to see what we call like same period last year, and all of that because we just want to see is our business growing and the only way we can actually say our business is growing is comparing data with last year's sale and this year's sale and calculating the percentage growth and uh, all of that okay so that is uh, our date our date functions so i just want to see where we are now okay our date functions so there are a few things that uh okay let me just introduce them okay is what we call exist all right i can say if not exist okay this begin I just say select from this, okay? I say, if it does not exist, let's run this. If it does not exist, because it actually exists, this statement here is not gonna run. But if I come in here and I remove this, because there's a business entity that is called this, if I run this, just this inner part, which is just there, I say select one from this where this thing is in there. I'm just checking, do I have any value that is called, that has a business entity on this? So if I run this, because it exists, then this inner statement will run for me. You understand, but as you as you go in, 
most times we use this whole thing is sometimes you want to check if a table is existing, you want to drop it or or you want to, if it's not there, if, if I go in here and I create and I say script to this table, if I go here and I say script and I say, if I want to see the script that they use to create this table, I'll right click on it and I'll say create. Okay, you see, this is the table that was used to create this table. Let the state not, not scare you. It's just uh, what the state is just the create table statement. The column, first one is the column is product ID. The data type is an integer. It's an identity column. What it means as an identity column is when I type in the first one, the system names it at one. If I put in the next one, the system names it at two. The system automatically increments the number. That is what this thing is. And I will say it is not null because at the end of the day, this is our primary key. Okay, we say it's a primary key that is named product ID and it has been created for us. So these all other ones are just the different table names. If I want to create a new table, all I might just need to do is you can just remove as many as you want. You can remove as many as you want. You can rename it to a, a different name. I can call it product test. Okay. Though these constraints, it's not gonna, I can just remove this uh, because you forget all of these long things that we are in here, okay. But if I do this, all right, and I close it up. You see, because there was a comma at the last one, there was, if I just run this, I'll be able to, to create this, this table. And I'm gonna create it, it's gonna be, in this database, if I just run it, the table has been created. If I come in here and I say select select all from the new table I have created that is on this product production schema, and this of course is is gonna give me an empty row. Okay, so this is just this is just one thing that you you don't need to think too much about it. I'm just gonna drop the table. I'll just say drop table and I specify the table name. I want to drop and I drop. Okay, so so if you wanna create a table, you see I just right clicked on this and I say script as create if i want to drop it i can say script as drop you're gonna see you see it tells you if exist it goes to the sys object to check if this thing is there and the type is is a user table you say drop it you understand so what you need to just do is if I want to check, like I have created a table that is called Mike, and each time I want to drop the table and I recreate it, rather for you to start thinking of how to just type this code, you just come in here, you right click, and you say script as, as drop or script as, as create. It will just give it to you. All you just need to do, you just change your own table's names in here and change it here and change it here, and you'll be able to to reuse this code the way you want. If you want to do an insert, I can, I can come here to say select top 1000. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. 
I don't know what is there. Sorry, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. All right. So, so you can use this. All right. On uh, just wanted to just open uh, just one second. Where is my other sequel? Just one second. Okay. Right. I just wanted to, if you have the old uh, SQL, I just probably still need to tune up this my Azure. All right. Or if you open this, the old SQL, which is something that you might still see in the office, it gives me a whole lot more functionality. Okay. I can just open this and these are still the same tables that we we use, but this one I can go here. It gives me a little more options, and I can go here to just say script. I can I can go I can go to script table. I can go to script as in as insert. All right. If I click on new window. It's going to give me that table and it's going to give me this is just this is just it gives you a skeleton of what the query is like. It gives you a, a skeleton of what the query is like. This insert values and then you can now just put put your values and 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 all of that and you'll be able to place your values in the name place your values in the group name and your modified date and you are good to you are good to go you understand so there are a whole lot of things you you come here you go to scripts i'm just going to look at the dama azure I, I, I didn't bother to to just start looking at at, at it before but this is what most times I I work with in the office. This is so this one it gives you a, a whole lot of options. You can say script, you can say edit. If you if I say edit top 20, it's gonna open it for me. And rather for me to write an update, you can just do it here, but this is not the best way to do an update to learn the SQL script. So if I want to update, I, I can just come here and say script table, and I can come here and say update to clickboard. I can just decide to just paste it in here, and it tells you use this database, update this one, set this one, and you just now this one. All you just need to do is to provide the values, and and you can begin to to use them to just learn your your syntax, your SQL syntaxes, all of them. So there are just quite the whole lot of things that you can do. Scripts, you can look at. To drop and recreate, you can look at select into uh, updates, deletes, and it will just give you a, a skeletal view of how to just construct, of just how to construct, uh, of just how to construct your your SQL statements. Okay. So this is where you can do that. I don't know why. Uh, Sesu, I don't know if you have you played on on, on some of these functionalities on uh, on this uh, Lajordara Studio. I don't know how why they 
it, 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 it's not there. It's only just a few that is in there. It says to here. No, um, so, so, um, I'm not sure. It's like probably it's not. Um, I don't think it's here. Okay, he was there earlier though. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So, so like this one, I don't see those uh, options, but uh, on the other SQL uh, studio, you studio. have a, a little more of those options that you can you can play around. You yeah, it, 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 could, yeah. It, could just, it could just be, you know, because they are different, right? And of course, the yeah. Azure Data, Data Studio have got more functionalities uh, more, yeah, over, uh, over this one. Right, yeah. yeah, but this is what you're going to be seeing in the office, this one. For this course we are doing, when you do Azure, you understand is an online database. The, the, what we're just using is not really, it's not Azure. It is just the studio to connect to the on-prem, but Azure as as a new database is is cloud-based, and and we create pipeline to the 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 front end is quite a little different. Okay, so so these are are what we have. So let me see what else we have not touched today before we we take questions Just... sorry okay so i have explained the uh, i have explained there is uh, these keywords. We've looked at the if exists, the drop table statements. We've looked at, uh, okay, this one is, is if exists. So, yeah, I'm just looking at uh, the keywords that we have looked at today is we've looked at uh, we looked at the date functions, the date div, the date part, the date name, the date added. Okay, I just want to see what else I want to I want to touch touch in here. Okay, let's look at the final thing today is those inner joins and sub queries. Sub queries are an inner joint. I'm, I'm gonna first look at, okay, let's just look at those joints again. We, we did this. Uh, but but quick one, Timothy. Is there a reason why you're using this instead of the Azure? This is Azure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You've you've gone out of it. Okay. I saw you. I saw you in the other environment before. Okay. Yeah. This is yeah. fine. Uh -huh. okay, no, cool. the other environment gave some little more features than what Azure offered. Okay. Cool. So I'm uh, not just bear in mind. Um, you've got like twenty minutes. Um, so let's see how we can unpack the remaining thing in 20 minutes. I want us to use the remaining like 35, 40 minutes for questions. 
Um, so that would be a great opportunity for all those that probably even select statement, like anyone that has got an equation, problems, challenges, you know, they will be able to use that 30 minutes, 30 something minutes to ask all those questions. At the end of the day, you know, once their questions are answered, they get 100% clarity. And of course, with the database they already have, with the instruction and everything, they can on their own continue to work, enhance their skill. Where they have challenges, the Telegram group is there where they could ask those questions, okay? Okay. In a join, okay, I did uh, the difference between an inner join, a right join, and a full outer join. You see, in here now I can say inner join. It will give me what is common in between. Have you seen? It gives me the things that are common in the in between, and it only gives me. 17 rows because it's joining between my person table and my sales person's table using my business entity. I'm saying, give me what is common between the two. And it gives me 17 rows. If I say left to join, what I'm saying is, give me the table on my left. This is the left one. And this is the right one. So if I say a left join, I say, give me everything from the table on my left side and give me anything that is joined on my right hand side. But I want everything on my left hand side. If I run this, you see, it gives me 2,777. Once you do a left join, if you come back and you say select count all, from the table on my left will give me 20,777 because I'm saying, give me everything on the table from my left. You see, once you do a left to join, verify it. It will give you everything on the table on your left hand side. And then whatever additional field you are looking for, like this year to year to date sale, will give you what is matching. But once you do an inner join, it will reduce it because it will only give you what is matching between the two. So if there is a business entity between this table, salesperson and business and person or business entity, it will give it to you. So if we look at it, we have only 17 matching business entities that is in person or business entity and is on the sales dot salesperson's entity. It's only 17 that is matching. But sometimes I want to use the table on my left as my base. Let me give you a, a, a typical example. I have 1 million check account in the bank. I have 1 million. Okay, let's just say I have 1,000 check account customers in the bank. And those check accounts, I want to start populating additional information like, do they have email? Do they have fax? Do they have uh, whatever, whatever? I want to start populating a whole lot of things. As I want to start populating the whole lot of things, as I want to start populating the whole lot of things, okay, I want to make sure that I don't drop the number of check out accounts I have. I have 1,000. I always want to keep that 1,000 and then add attributes that, that they have. But I don't want to reduce from that 1,000 right? because I'm reporting on 1,000. In that case, I don't want to use a, an inner join because what if I do an inner join, I probably I want to join it to the email addresses and only 700 has email addresses. So I would have lost those 300 customers 
a war report on them. That is not what I want. I want to keep my base at 1,000 and then begin to increment other attributes that I want to describe the 1,000 Kekala account customers. Whether they have, whether all of them have it or not, I just want to increment them. In that case, my Kekala account will be on my left, will be the first column I'm going to reference, which is going to be on the left-hand side of, of my query. And then the queries I want to be joining it with will be on the right hand side. In that case, by the time I finish running the query, I will still have my 1000 check account customers. That is where you use a left to join. If I shift this and I take it, if I shift this, sorry, if I shift this, If, if I shift this, if I shift this table and I put it here and I take this one and I put it here, if I still want to get the same thing, I'll just say right to join because I've moved the table around. So it, it all depends on where you place it. If I still come here, I'll stay here. It's is the same thing. Right join and left join data is dependent on where you place, where the table is on your query. Which one do you want? If I want every query on my right, every record on my right, and then matching records on my left, then I will specify where the tables are. If I want everything on my left now, because this one is here, if I say left to join, and I run it. It will give me 17 because I have swapped them. The other one, I only say, give me everything that is on the sales and give me a corresponding one from the persons or business entity. But if I say I want everything that is here and everything that is here, I use an inner join. If I now say I want everything on two of them, full outer join. If I say I want everything on, give me what is matching here, what is not matching here, and you give it to me, you see, it will give me the table that has the highest number of of records because it's a full outer join. It will give me both the tables that has null, both the tables that has values. It will give me everything, but it's going to give you, on the full outer join, it will give you a record that has the maximum table. If your maximum is 1 million, a full outer join will give you the 1 million, but it's going to give you what is matching or what is not matching. But if there is a new ones that are in there that are not here, it will stay added for you. It's a full outer join. Everything that is matching and everything that is not matching, bring it. So if I don't have business entities, you're going to see down, if there are new business entities here that are not there, you're going to see down here will be null and it will give me what is matching in there. In that case, the number of records will be more. I'm going to... Yes. So I think another possible use case to give a good explanation of the left join and then the inner join will be like the question one assignment that we used except, right? Yes. So maybe we can use that example just to show them. So there might be a scenario where you want to get, um, you want to send, do a marketing email, right? And you want to retrieve only customers that have emails. In that case, you can do that with the persons.person .person table and the email table and do an inner join. And it returns only people who have emails. Who has emails. If you want to get people, everyone, including people who do not have emails, then you can put your person.person .person table first and then do a left join with the email table. And then maybe you want to contact those people 
by maybe their phone number or something to ask them to provide their emails, right? So those are the kind of use cases. So you can also use your left join to solve that question one assignment. You know, like Timothy said, there are a million ways to do it. So that's a typical use case. Thanks, Sisu. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that contribution. Particularly, the, as you're using left and your right to join, the system looks at which table is on your left and which one is on your right. That is what it uses to determine which one is left to join, which one should I consider more, or which one sh should I consider? If you say left to join, it's going to be considering the table on your left. If you say right, it's going to be the table on your right. So with that, that is uh, OK. We can, we can take questions, and, uh, and then we'll wrap up. OK. Excellent. Ex excellent. Thank you, uh, Timothy. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Sensu, as well. All right, guys. So as many of you that have got questions, please, uh, let's raise our hands. Let's raise our hands. Let's see how many we can take now. Like you've got any question from beginning, beginning of this program, right? All the way from when we started with select, um, you know, from select, we went into joins, from join, inner join, outer join, you know, talking about um, how to aggregate table. You know, any question whatsoever that you've got, uh, this is an opportunity, especially probably if you, you were not able to ask maybe the last time. And... Um, it could even be a use case. It could even be what is going on in your company right now. Maybe you are using Excel in your workplace and you're having one or two challenges. It could be a peculiar situation that you're having and you want to you know, ask questions to get some insight on how to go about it. This is an opportunity, guys. Uh, remember, today is the last day for the program. So we really want to wrap up by you know, getting um, through many questions as possible. And of course, once we are done with that, then we get the program manager to talk about um, uh, the certificate of uh, achievement, which is going to be issued to everyone that have, you know, completed the program. And of course, uh, we're also going to be sharing more information in respect to the TriTech, um, you know, the three days program coming out December 15th to 17th. If you have no registers, do wait to, to do that. Go to Black Tech website and register for TriTech. It, you'll be glad you did, because that is the program where we're going to be unpacking everything in tech. Uh, remember, the SQL program that we've just done is not the foundation of tech. I just want to reiterate that because somebody mentioned that to me some weeks ago. Uh, to say, oh, is it the foundation of tech? No wonder. I talk, say, tech, they're difficult, you know? <laughs> so this is not the foundation of tech. SQL is a tool. SQL is a language. It's a skill that is required by data analyst. A data analyst or data analysis is one domain within the tech ecosystem. Inside tech, there are different areas. Business analysis, cybersecurity, DevOps, cloud computing, and so on and so forth. Each of these have their own peculiar skills required to do well. So SQL that you are learning is peculiar to data analysts. So that you don't, you know, maybe if, for example, you are not fully able to grab the SQL, because of course, not everybody, that's the truth. We are hundreds of people. Some will grab it for some, especially maybe those that haven't done anything like, you know, no work experience at all. They haven't done anything in their career. They are just probably out of high school and they're looking at the screen. They are saying, what is going on? Yeah, things might look a little bit fuzzy for you, right? We could have situation like that, but that doesn't, you know, it cause any discouragement by saying, oh, so now this thing I go do for tech. No, that is not the case. This is a skill primarily required and used by data analyst okay even data analysts not even all of them there are some data analysts today what they are using in their place of work is excel and power bi there are some data analysts that don't use sql so you need to also understand this but if you want to go deeper into data analytics then you must learn SQL because it's important too to have, especially if you are looking at going deeper into it. But if you are looking at the reporting side of things, business intelligence, you might not even need SQL in your place of work. So I want to reiterate this, very important, okay? So that because sometimes, you know, we, we have professionals, probably once they see a program, they register for a program. Many might not even know what they want to do. Like the lady was speaking to me last week, she said, I don't even know what to do. 
I just want to do any IT program. So when I hear things like that, that's a problem. That's a challenge. And, and for those kind of conversations, sometimes it takes 30 minutes, 30 good minutes to unlock. First of all, trying to understand the person's background, where you are coming from, your experience, everything. Based on all this information, we now begin to align, okay, which program will connect more based on your skill set so that you what? Make quick progress. Because it doesn't make sense. If you don't have any background at all, all of a sudden, you say you want to go into something like software engineering. Yeah, you're not going to succeed in that kind of program. That's the truth. Sometimes you want to start small. There are people that if they want to start with software engineering, they start with Python. Start learning coding. From there, they can now move higher. Some people, they want to start like project management. They start with what? Business analysis. As they make progress as business analysts, they can now what? Move into project management. Everything is a strategy. Don't just come and jump. You want what? Strategize. And that is what is called career planning. You plan your career. Immediate goal. Short-term goal. Long-term goal. That is how to achieve the success. Okay? All right. Having said that, and... Uh, for the link for our Tritech, let me drop it now. Somebody just mentioned that. Can we have the link again? Uh, I thought I have it handy here with me. One second. Let me drop it right now before I probably forget about it. Um, okay, on the chat, can you look at the chat for those that are here to register for the Tritech, which is the three days free program on 15th, 16th, and 17th. The link is on the chat right now. Do where to register for TriTech. There are a lot of programs that will register for TriTech and you'll be able to get all the information you need, okay? All right, so let's move quickly, guys, uh, to the next thing, um, which is taking questions. Uh, Michael, I am Toye. Michael, are you there? Please, everyone, just get yes. ready. Yeah, get ready to unmute yourself, please. As soon as I call your name, get ready to unmute yourself. And um, please, when you, when you, when you, because right now I think we've got 17 persons really that have got questions. Let's try as much as possible to go straight to the point, please. Okay, just straight to the point. And if you want to come up and your question has been answered already, then there's no point, right? So please, let's do that so that we can maximize this time. Michael, go for it, please. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I basically want to ask, is there any major difference between um, using inner join and intercepts and using um, fully full outer join and um, union? Yes, there are, there are different things. There are, I use intercept, it's, it's a lot quicker for me and it's a whole, and there are different scenarios. If I want to merge tables between, if I want to merge tables, this table and like this table, I want to merge them together, then I start using join. But an intercept and accept, you can match tables. You can just see what is in there and what is not in there. You understand? They, are, they all use, there are different scenarios, but there might be a scenario that can work for the two, that you can use the two, but not in, in most of the scenarios. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Excellent. All right. So let's go quickly to Michael. Michael, are you there? I'm there. Hello, Mr. Timothy. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, how do you combine two other statements on the same house post? What I mean is, when we did the profit margin, we were seen from the like from the highest to the lowest. What if we wanted to see from the lowest, from the lowest to the highest on the same output? No, you can only sort on one column at a time on your field. You can only sort one column. Okay, not like you can sort one column, but one column takes priority. One column takes priority. You can sort three different columns. You can say after I sort this column is priority number one, second column priority number two, second column priority number three. So you can't have the same table you wanna sort up and the other one and the same column how you wanna sort down. How does the system uh, be able to cater for that? But you can sort on 
four or five different tables, but is in order of priority. The first one is sorted priority number one. Second one it is sorted after based on the sorting of the first one and subsequently like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. Okay, let's go quickly to Fola. Fola, go for it, please. Fola, Fola is not there. Let's go to 138 and 139. 138 and 139. Please go for it. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry about the name. Uh, thanks, guys, for the opportunity. It was quite interesting having to join. So my quick question is to Timothy um, and the other guys on the call, if possible. So take, for instance, a technical business analyst. You have the opportunity to uh, create schemas for a project you're working on, maybe a short project. You want to create schemas. You want to make sure the tables. Uh, OK, so you kind of have this relational DBMS where you have um, you you are taxed with the role to create the aims, the constraints, everything that's required. Yeah. How do you advise in such cases? Because, you know, you know, I mean, you pretty much know what it means as a technical BA. You need to make sure you define all the schemas. Um, so, sorry, sorry, one second, 138 and 139. Uh, Remy, Remy, if you are there, can you see the chat, please? Uh, you need to go into the form and enable responses. All right, continue, uh, 138, go ahead. Done, done. Okay, okay so that's that's pretty much my question. I'm, so, I'm sorry, my name is Abby. I mistakenly, Abby, I mistakenly forgot to rename my Zoom back. So that's just my question. I just want to find out how, how do you take, how do you um, bring up the concept of design? How do you manage to create those schemas, column names end to end as a tech, technical BA? It's a technical BA first is a, when you go to speak to your customers, they just describe what their business is like. You begin to listen to verbs, uh, uh, verbs are relationships. You begin mm -hmm. to look at uh, the nouns, you uh, begin to translate to your objects. You understand, you begin to know what describe those objects, those becomes your attributes those attributes which kind of data do they hold that becomes your data types and once you've done that you'll be able to create each of the tables columns you'll be able to map their relationships and once you have done that then the next one is now if you now move from logical design to your physical design that is exactly, when you actually exactly. begin to That's the point when you now begin to create those individual objects those individual objects you are not the person that is going to create them it but, is you, have to, be but your, you have to give a developer the template the design yeah, you have to give the template huh? but there are other things that we are going to be looking at we're going to be looking at primary and logical file groups you understand we're going to be looking at the data size we're going to be looking at uh, uh, the file data growth, how many percent do we enable them? Those are technical. So exactly. what you need to do is to define the entities, the attributes, the data types, the relationship. Your job ends in the data, in the logical design as a BA. Okay. You understand that is now handed over to the, to the database group because each of those database they are going to create they are gonna now look at which drive on the server has enough space. Is it gonna be on a sound server? Is it gonna be virtualized? You understand? They're not gonna be discussing where do they need to put each of those tables that you have created and those relationships. But you as a technical BA is just to be able to translate the, 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 the language of the business people into technical is by identifying primary groups, identifying objects, identifying relationships, mapping out what is a foreign key and a primary key, mapping out the whole columns on the table and their mm -hmm. data types and all of that, and then you hand it over. Okay, sounds good. All right, fantastic. Thanks, thanks, fantastic, awesome. Let's go to Tari. Tari, go for it, please. 
Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go for it. Sorry, my question has been answered. I was just about to put my hand down. Thank you. Fan fantastic. I love that. Thank you. Let's go to Miriam, please. Miriam, are you there? Hello. Yes, go for okay. it, please. Thank you very much. Um, my question is, what's the difference between a full outer joint and an outer joint? I have to question. Then the second one is, um, how do we extract information into an SQL? For example, if um, someone wants to do a visualization with Power BI, you can extract information from your Excel and also from SQL. But how do we get information into SQL? Because I've been trying to get that. Thank you very much. A full outer join and outer join are the same thing. Okay. They are the same thing. Okay, in, uh, if you want to do visualization, two things that you can do is you can either, depending on the size of the table, okay. depending on the size of the table in Power BI, if the size is too much, you're going to do a direct query. Yes. Okay. If the size is not too much, you can do an import and then refresh your data, schedule a refresh of your data from time to time as you want. Okay. You understand? So if it's uh, on analysis services, which is a cube that has already been built, you understand there is yeah, the analysis services only have one kind of a thing. I, I, I can't remember, but you just go to Power BI and you go to get that resource. You're going to go to SQL, go to analysis services and you put the cube name and the server name and you put the data in. If it's on SQL, if the data is too much, what you just do is you just do a direct query. But you okay. know, on Power BI, there are things you cannot do when you're using a direct query and when you're using an import. Okay. You understand? So there are a, 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 few, a few limitations. But there's still what we do in uh, the Power BI paramet uh, parameterization. You understand? You're going to see your range start and your range end date. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, are, we are, as you are importing it, you're going to do an incremental import. You understand? You add every day. You're not pulling all the whole tables. You can just pull in the table that you want. And then you can now have an archival policy that is set in your Power BI to just say there is that are older than two years, you can delete. In that case, it will be important every day and be deleting the old one so that your data is always refreshed with something that is relevant. Okay. Right. Thank, thank you, you very much, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go quickly to Anita. Anita, go for it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Timothy, I just want to ask, what's the a clear difference between having and um, where, especially when we're doing the um, greater than or less than, when we have that condition part that says where number is greater than 1,000, having number greater than 1,000, when do we exactly decide to use having instead of where or where instead of having? Having is usually when you have an aggregated function. When if I'm summing things and I want to now apply the sum of them, you understand I cannot use a having function. You understand I can just say count everything for me based on customer, but I'm only interested in customers that have placed more than 10 orders. I cannot say having count greater than this. We are clause only filters the data on the table. You understand, you cannot choose a having to filter. You cannot say select all from a table. Having, having this, you understand, you use a where, a where function to filter the data and a having function to filter an aggregated function. I don't know if it makes sense to you. Hello. Hello, can you hear? Okay, I think she's good. Um, you can respond on the chat. Let's go to Balogun. Balogun, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay, please go for it. Yeah, but my question is what's the difference between view and temporary table? A view is just the name of a view 
is you want to just have a view of your table. All right, I can go and I write a select statement doing my joints and everything because I don't want to repeat that code again. I create it as a view. A view will not act as if it's a table. A view is based on the underlying table. A view saves you space because you're not duplicating the data. A temporary table, you're duplicating the data you understand the only thing is that when you close your section, the temporary table is gone. So I will use my temporary table when I'm just busy interrogating the data. If I interrogate the data and I see that this data is giving me what I want and I want to store that thing, two things I can do is either I create that query as a stop procedure or I create it as a view. A stop procedure, you can have a whole lot of statements Temporary statement massaging your data, and at the end of the day, you create the data set. I create it as a stored procedure. But if I just want to just have a, a, a view of, of my data, that is why it's called a, a view. All of these data, if all of these data I have created here, doing all of this join, you can just go on top of it and just say create view, name it as uh, emails, you understand, and as the table that we use to create the email. The next time you just write select from emails, it will go behind the scene and do all of those joints for you. And then, so we can just say two of them, views and store procedures, it marks the complexity of the code. You understand for we as, a, as data people, you understand, and even on different levels, we can create views so that our other less technical people can just look at those views as if it's a table, select all where this thing is this. Meanwhile, I probably would have joined over 10, 10 tables, you understand, to create a view or love the table. So if you even go in here, you're gonna see views. A view and a table cannot have the same name. You cannot have a view and a table have with the same name the system will tell you no to it. So if, if I come here and I just say create, create view, you're gonna see this is this, I say create a view. Okay, I'm not sharing my screen, right? Am I sharing? Yes, you're sharing, we can see your okay, screen. Yeah, okay. So see, I have just run, this is just my select statement, right? This is just my select statement. You see how many, you see how many tables I have joined? Some inner joint, some left joint, some outer joint, depending on, on the, what I, I want to do. If I have created all of this, the next time I don't want to go and type and recreate this. If I run this, this thing just runs just well. You understand? And, and it gives me what I, I want. You understand? But because it's not created as a view, I just come here and I say create as a view and I put this. I cannot go back and I just come here and I take this, all right, and I come down, I can just say select all from this view. It will still give me this same information as if this view is a table, it's not a table. You understand? I just use it to mask the complexity of what I have created for other people to use them. Yeah, so in, in, in Lindera, there's what we call, we can say we're building a data mat. We build a, 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 a data mat. We do a whole lot of joints. We do a whole lot of massages. You understand? We create that mat. You now assess that mat as if it's, it's, it's not a table. You understand? But that is persisting the information of a view into a mat but this is just there is no this data does not take an additional space it is still sitting on these individual tables where they are coming from so you use a view to to minimize your storage and then to people to have a particular description of how they want to see the data you create a view for them or it's not procedure excellent excellent thank you so much Timothy. thank you let's move quickly to david David, please go for it.
Is David there? Hello. Yes. Go for it, please. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Go for it. David, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I can hear you now. Yeah. Sorry, my question may be a bit um, funny, but uh, wouldn't, I wanted to find out. I did an interview some time ago, and uh, I think the reason why I didn't get the job was because of SQL related question. So I am a BA. So I just wanted to ask how do we approach SQL related questions in interview? Because um, I, I appreciate this foundation and this drilling we've had, but I also see now that there is a lot of a lot to SQL that we may not know. So it's possible, despite what I know today from this training, I could still make a question that I don't even know how to um, answer. What is the best approach to answering SQL questions in interview, especially if you have an area that you probably don't know about? How do you go about it? Okay, okay. You see, like SQL has different parts. First, there is SQL administration. Administration is they are managing the 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 tables, they are managing the log files, they are managing the, the spaces, they are doing backups, they are granting users rights, and uh, all of those whole things. Those is SQL administration. Then there is SQL ETL. Like somebody here I was talking about SSIS. Okay, it started from D DTS. You go to DTS, SSIS, those are people that are in charge of importing data into the system. All right, they do an extract, they take data from different sources, they merge them together and they import them into the warehouse where people can now begin to report. Those are still SQL. There are people that are developers. Those are the people that build, uh, stop procedures, views. They can, business intelligence people, they can create the packages and all of those whole things. Those are still simple developers. And sometimes, the business, they mix them up to just say data analyst, but you can get into the data analyst. Your job is actually doing the imports, cleaning the data, making the data clean and so that the data becomes an authoritative source. And there are still people that are in there that takes those data, take them into BI, Power BI, build valid, uh, visualization and all of that. There are still some small companies where you do the you do from end to end. Like we are uh, working now. I, I'm actually I have seen their data and I noticed that there were some some gaps that is missing. So part of the things I am doing is remodeling their star schema data, still doing the creating the the views and the stop procedures and still showing them the visualization. So once they, they ask you those kind of questions, you'll be able to tell them that there are SQL are different. There are a, a whole lot of things on, on SQL. If you, if you ask me how to visualize a SQL Server box, I don't know it. It's not my area. It's on administration, you understand? So it's on storage. So depending on what they ask you, but for what you're supposed to be doing, you need to know what is a stop procedure. You need to know what is a view. You need to understand how indexes work because they, they, they help you for data to be optimized. And then you just need to understand the syntaxes of what is an update, select, insert, and learn all of those whole things. So I think that's what it's all about, but nobody, no one developer, except you've had opportunity. I have worked as an administrator, worked as an ETA developer, I mean, to visualization. So, but it took me years to move from as the job exposes you to each and every one of them. But these are the basic ones that you need to be able to tell them. 
you need, like I said, what is a stop procedure? What is a view? What is an inner join? What is the insert? What is an update statement? And like all those that did mention, some of the things they are gonna ask you that is on the job spec, they don't even use it in the office. I was just asking my boss to just say, you were asking me about triggers. None of your system has ever implemented a trigger. You understand? And he just laughed and he's just saying, no, Tim, it's for the future. <laughs> so yeah, that's my answer, my brother. Okay. Yeah, great, uh, great feedback, um, Timothy. Yeah, just like you rightly said, not everything, not everything that we see on the JD that will eventually be used. That's correct. Let's go quickly to Aminat. Aminat, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Okay, my question is um, this Microsoft Azure, the database, then I believe is a cloud, um, cloud based. Is it yeah, different that, from as in what's the what's the difference as in like is there much difference the database of the Azure from the one of the AWS and the um, Google Cloud? Then the second question, my second one is to Osita. Um, it, it, this is a very great um, job. I really enjoyed it, and um, I remember you said them. Um, there's going to be a scholarship for for two people or thereabout. So I, I just want to I just want to chip it in that um, does it still stand so that we will know if the scholarship is still available or not? Thank you. Okay, great. So let me take that. Then uh, Timothy will answer the first one. Yes, it's still available. Just like I mentioned, the plan was today we want to embed Power BI, right? To be able to, you know, kind of bring everything like more like 360 degree for those that want to now move into data analytics. But we couldn't do that because of time. So one of the things that we've planned in the three days tri tech program is to have that particular you know scholarship discussed as well so that is going to happen on the 15th of the december remember it's going to be three days 15 16 17th right so we're going to have that discussion on that day okay then the first question that timothy are you there yes yes okay what you are doing now is not azure you're using azure data studio it is not azure as an Azure database, okay? We're using the, the, the studio to, Azure is cloud-based, but this data you're looking here is what we call on-prem, is on-premises, is not cloud. You understand, we're only using this Azure data studio to connect to that thing, which the other ones I, I'm showing you is this one that is on my screen, is the default one. You understand? So you are not doing Azure. You're just using Azure Data Studio to do on-prem, but this is not Azure. Timot, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, fantastic. All right. Shall they go for it, please? Shall they are you done? Yeah, thank you very much, Osita. I was just still pondering on what Timothy said about this is Azure, Data Studio Azure. I'm still confused because it actually gets me confused. No, but um, right. so a few days ago, a friend of mine had an interview. She's a BA. I just finished from the last cohort too. So she's a BA, not from this cohort, but a friend. She said um, they needed the BA to have an idea or experience with SQL. So they asked that three questions. What is a database transaction? What is a union? Um, what is the difference between union and union all? Uh, um, and the, three, the third question was, um, what situation should you use where and having in the statement? So we started rubbing minds together when she gone because she said, even though she's on this platform, and we always go back to do self-practice, but at times, because one is not like a major, it still gets confusing. And sincerely, I was like, yeah, I know we use where, we use having, but for real, I was just wondering if I'm asked this question as a BA for an SQL related BA, are you sure I would even answer perfectly? Please, can you just help? 
union and so union right. all mm -hmm. is combining two tables. A union, mm -hmm. where they want, what they want you to hear is a union joins two tables and eliminates duplicates. A union all joins the two tables, including duplicates. They are just going to nod and smile because they know you know what you're talking about. The next question is having clause and where clause. Where is when we used to, where we use it to filter a table. Having, we use it to filter and I, it, it, we used it to filter an aggregated function. You can say some, having some less than or greater than, or having some whatever, or having count, or having average. But where is you just need to limit the record from a table with or without an aggregated function. Then how, what was the last one? Is you know all union having and we are clause. What was the last one? Is she still there, Shade? I'm muted, okay. Okay, I can talk. What yeah, the last, the last one, one is, one? Um, what is a database transaction? Yes, what we were discussing here, I, there is a code I wrote for you, begin transaction mm -hmm. and roll back transaction. A transaction yeah. is, every, is, is something that needs to all, either they go through together or they fall together. It's either they succeed together. It's a couple of SQL statements that you want. Is either all of them execute completely or non-execute, but they cannot execute in isolation. And I gave you an example of somebody withdrawing, updating your bank transaction to debit the money you want to pay to somebody. Mm -hmm. But you don't want that debit alone to go through without a credit into the other person's transaction. Mm -hmm. So what you are having is you are having two update statements, updating your own, mm -hmm. reducing the money, and updating the next person's statement, increasing, increasing. the money. So you don't want only the first update to go through and the second one doesn't go through, then who takes the money? So you put them as a transaction. So it's either the two updates goes through or none of the updates goes through. That is a transaction. Okay, so you can either commit or roll back. Or roll back, yes. Correct, you're speaking the language. I'm borrowing from you. I hope all these things will just stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny at all. Thank you so much. <laughs> it, it, will, it, will, it will stick. It will yeah. stick. So, again, mm. because the more you use this, the more you talk about it, the more you, right? And that is why even the, even the group, ensure you are also, you know, and, uh, communicating in the group. Well, sister, please, when is the next cohort starting again? No, hold on, hold on. Let's finish this one first. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need to, even in the cohort where you are, talking about the group, you have to be collaborating, right? Sometimes the best way to even learn is by teaching, right? There are people that do that. So even in the group, some people are trained some question, oh, I ran this statement and I'm having this error. You can even support, right? To say, oh, have you tried this? Or have you tried that? Right? So the more you engage, the more it also helps you as well as a professional. And that is the easiest way really to, to, to grow. That is why in our community, we encourage so much participation, right? Especially in our programs where you have limited number of people, there is focus, you have all the faculty, everybody is focused on you to ensure you succeed, right? But when we have a program where we have hundreds, hundreds of people like this, sometimes some people are coming with bad intent. Why majority are coming with good intent, and that is the problem now. Most of you cannot effectively, you know, even uh, do things the way you want to do it today by chatting to everybody and stuff like that, right? That is it. You know, that's what you can get when one or two individual, uh, probably with bad intent, are trying to now get every other person to, you know, um, to be denied the privilege of, you know, being able to be free. But again, just like we say, this program is intro to sql right and of course we also appreciate you guys activating the coconut head going through all the way to this point but know that in the actual program if you're enrolling in the data analytics program starting 14th of january these things will be fully unpacked because there's going to be more time and of course all of you are going to be together with the faculties 
there is more time for everybody. And of course, the class is limited number of people. So that is easier for you to really, you know, delve into these things and deepen those skills. Okay. All right. Let's move quickly to Mayo. Mayo Ayo, are you there? Mayo Ayo. Hi, hello. Hi. Yes, yes, please okay, go yeah. for it. All right, yeah, thanks so much. Um, just a quick question. Um, so just to confirm, the best or the best, the most appropriate way to do any analysis when you're in a database is to create a test table, right? And not just run on a table so that, um, because and the reason I asked is the number one question for the assignment, I did it, I missed a whole lot of things, but looking at what was done today using the test table, I was able to roll back or uh, I was able to drop the table, recreate it, drop the table, and then I eventually got it. So to confirm the best way to go about anything is just create a test table and you're able to play with that and then it. drop it and then recreate it if you are not getting what you get, right? Yes. Because uh, an, an example was what I, I was just doing yesterday at work. Okay. That is uh, sometimes the data is dirty. Okay. The data you're looking at is dirty. Some people do, might capture something two times. You understand? But in Helena makes me business sense. I, I read through that data, I, I, I wrote the data. And at the end of the day, I just say a car cannot be repossessed two times. It can only re be repossessed once. You look at the data, you find out that it was captured two times. How will you be able to check those whole things? Is I have run to my final result, and then I look at my timetable, I query it, I just say, no, this car cannot be sold two times. It can only be sold once. You understand? And in that case, with your timetable, you can move up and down, delete, remove, recreate until you get your final thing. And after that, you now start cleaning up your data. You now start cleaning up your data. So your timetable is a way that I step through my code. You understand? You've you've gotten the alien information. You just query it. Is it right? It's not right. Or did I miss something? Or the the filter wasn't applied rightly. I do that after I have created it with a whole lot of 10 tables and I get my final result is fine. I will now begin to do my cleanup. And sometimes I now decide, okay, you know what, this 10 table is not really necessary. Okay, these two tables, I can actually join them together. You know, these two queries, I can join them together. And then you begin to play around it. But as a data analyst, I have seen my colleagues' code, I have seen my code. Temptable is 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 what you use to to navigate down until you get what you want. Okay, thank you very much. All right, fantastic. Let's go quickly to Oluwa Shei. Shei, Oluwa Shei, are you there? Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you, Timothy. Um, sincerely, I want to appreciate you guys for this uh, class. I mainly am in a software engineering program and. SQL is part of a uh, uh, language to take, and this uh, class really gave me a start. But I want to confirm because in our for us uh, databases, uh, we don't have our file that we work with a software engineer or that the language is work with is a JSON file. So sometimes we convert it to CSV. So I want to ask Timothy, uh, how does uh, how does um, this uh, platform now can the, how does it interact with JSON, or is there the what's the pathway to or how does it deal with JSON? Or how can we use it to work on JSON? Do we do we need to convert it to any special data type before we can work on it? Yeah, so that's my question. Yeah, that is a uh, JSON objects are we use them for unstructured SQL. Is 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 we call the no sequel is unstructured. You understand? You use your JSON files. Most of the JSON files capabilities are catered for in in the main Azure. You understand? You can you can read JSON file objects. You understand? On this one, somewhat of the things before that gave back to JSON used to be XML, extensible markup language, where you have all the whole. Uh, 
the different tags you understand for XML. So for, for JSON object on prem SQL here, this one we're learning doesn't really cater for 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 JSON objects. You understand? You have more of it catered in the main Azure, in, in the main Azure cloud platform huh? because now data comes from Twitter, comes from Facebook, comes from so they are unstructured and we use JSON oh, objects. So so you just need to read a little more, but is there's a lot more support for JSON object in the in the Azure cloud. Mm. Okay, okay, thank you very much for that. Then uh, please uh, permit me the, the, the question very quickly. So I have uh, maybe I have um, a permission or like a slot to take the Azure uh, A to Z uh, cloud uh, whatever the exam. So I want to know uh, what like what percentage does this class get up for? Am I good to go? I need to probably go and read on that separately. No, not a, this. This one will just give you to just write the syntax, the SQL syntax. But if you want to go to Azure, the A to Z for data, you there are different. You're gonna look at Cosmo DBs, Mongo DBs. You're gonna be looking at uh, how to create pipelines. We don't talk about uh, source and destination in uh, in cloud. How uh, we talk about uh, we talk about. Uh, uh, source and sync, you understand. So okay. it's it's they are just different, majorly different technologies. Mm, but this one will just help you. You can still the same code you write here. You can write it on the cloud, and from with this Azure Data Studio, we can still connect our cloud. You can see it as if it's on prem, but it's actually sitting on on log cloud. You understand you use all those or there's a lot of ip addresses a lot of firewalls that that are configured you understand so that people don't hack it into your data but you can actually connect this azure and see your cloud as if the same way we are seeing it here and the same code you are running here you can run them in there on the cloud okay okay thank you very much thank you very much all right, fantastic. Let's go quickly. Okay, Chuku. Okay, Chuku, are you there? Hello. Good. Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. I uh, just want to appreciate um, all you guys have been doing. Although I missed a few classes, uh, but uh, not to worry. I, I I have the the video sent to my email, so I will have to go and uh, look through them. But I, I I just want to ask a question. I Recently, just before this uh, cohort began, I, I, I finished, I, I got my Google Data Analytics uh, certification. And um, while I was doing that, I had a lot of questions in mind, especially as regards to how to be able to select the best tools for, uh, for data analysis. Mm -hmm. I, I came across uh, several technologies like Arrow Studio, um, SQL itself, uh, 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 advanced Excel, Tableau, and so many, so many other things. So I want to know, as a data analyst, uh, am I supposed to be able to uh, know all everything, or is there just it is the very good um, sweet spot I can hit uh, in terms of tools that I need as a data analyst to be able to actually uh, function, you know, in, in that capacity? So that is what I I just want to ask. Thank you. Yeah, most times it all depends on the license your office has. Like my office, we don't have Tableau. Tableau is a little more expensive, but because we have Microsoft, we have Power BI. You understand? We use them. All right. Then when you talk about uh, other things, is uh, if I wanna, there are things I wanna do on, on Python. Okay, there are libraries like Seaborn, the MATLABs. You understand that I want to create my my heat maps and all of those all things to just see how my two variables are actually interacting together, the influence of those two variables. In R, you you be able to see things that you can do on regressions, data regressions. You want to see two variables. You have you know the influence they have each on each other. You wanna 
look at data regression, but my advice is SQL is core because most databases in the office they are using, they are using Microsoft platforms. You understand majority, except the very, very, very big banks and the big, big companies that you see them using Oracle. You understand using Oracle and Teradata, even at that. But if you learn SQL well, and then you can choose between Power BI and Tableau as your visualization tool, you understand. Two of them, they do the same thing. By the time you learn Power BI and you decide to go to Tableau, you understand you're just gonna still see similarities in a whole lot of them that you'll be able to understand them more. But SQL it's is critical. Do SQL and uh, Power BI, you can download it for free, but Tableau one, they just give you free trial for two weeks. You understand, it's just too small. So you can just use Power BI to just learn. And then if you now want to begin to do R, R is more of statistical analysis, which you can still use Python to do. So yeah, but for me, do Microsoft SQL. If you have money to buy the license, you buy Tableau. If you don't have, there are three versions of uh, Power BI that you can use. All you just need to do is to understand the principles of what you need to do. You can always adapt for other technologies. All right, fantastic. Let's go, guys. I think we have a few more hands. Um, Adobe, Adobe, please go for it. And guys, if you look at the chat right now, the program manager have shared the um, evaluation form. Okay, do well to complete it. Um, and of course, make sure you spell your name correctly. That is the names you have in there is the name that will reflect on the certificate of achievement that will be sent to you guys. Uh, so make sure you complete it. And um, I think there's a timeline. What's the timeline? December 8th. Make sure you complete by December 8th. Last cohort, there was a deadline. Three weeks after the deadline, some people we are reaching back to say, please, I want to find out uh, when I can fill the form to get my certificate. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do at that point. So everything I've got a timeline, okay? Don't wait. If you, are, if you are sure you have completed the program, the program manager have a way of validating because he's gonna look at the assignments. He's gonna go through that. And that is how you're gonna get your certificate. Please don't wait till after December 9th you start reaching out. Please, I couldn't submit it then because my laptop crashed. Can you end up, uh, those kind of excuses will not be attainable, okay? Please, let's try to work with time, guys, okay? Thanks, everyone. Adobe, go for it, please. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, my question is, uh, now we are using a Microsoft uh, SQL Server. And when I was going through uh, Google Analytics. I saw something like uh, MySQL, SQL Lite, Postgres uh, SQL. So I want to know now: Are they the same thing? Do they work the same? Okay, they are all like the same. They are all different types of cars. Every car moves on the road. One is Volvo. One is Toyota. One, it's a VW. If you know how to drive them, you could always drive them, but their steering might be different. Where their trafficators are, are different. The same thing, you have different versions of these relational databases. Bosch, Great, SQL, uh, MySQL, and all of them. They, are, they all use the transact SQL statement, but their dialects, like I said, is is different, but if you master them, it's a whole lot easier for you to learn the other one and the other one and the other one. But SQL is more commonly used. That's the okay. Okay, okay thank you, Mr. Oster. Please, yes. uh, this uh, January cohort, please, I will, I because I really want to join. But one thing there is that I, I, I want to, if you people can be able to start sending the amount so that 
people that don't really have can start sorting themselves out before the and time. The, yeah, that, that is fine. Have you completed the form? Yes, I've done everything now. Okay, okay, that is fine. You will start getting that from next week, okay? All right. Thank All right, you. and if you don't, send an email. You have the email? On the website, there's an email there. That is the fastest way. You can send an email and you'll be able to get everything today if you send that email. Okay? All right, All right you. great. You're welcome. Oh, Lubukola, go for it, please. I think we have just two more two more hands, right? Oh, no. What am All I right. saying? Yeah, go good for it, please. Okay, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Sita and the whole Black Tech team. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for the great privilege. My question is this, Timothy, please, I would like, I would appreciate if you could just explain better what we meant by, uh, what we call it, this insert and creative, when exactly do we use them, please? Thank you. Yeah. Insert is where you want to put information into the database, okay? Insert is where you want to put information in the database. All right. Create table is when you want to create a table in a database. That create table statement, your SQL would have very much advanced and you're probably part of uh, uh, the DBA team. Most companies, they will restrict your access to create a table statement, but you need to learn how to create a table statement. When you create a table, it's like you made a container. You cannot start adding things inside it. And that's when you begin to insert records inside the table. So I don't know if it makes sense. So you create a table and then you insert records inside the table. So when you still write all those temporary tables, is you're creating a, a, a table, but it's just a temporary table insert is when you want to put something inside the table and uh, update is when you want to change something in the table creating a table statement is just you want to create the table where you now start to store your data inside it i don't know if it makes sense all right so let's move quickly guys guys we've got just like um five minutes five minutes um, what can we do? Five minutes and we've got six hands or seven hands. Let's go to Omolala. Let's see if we can get through it in one minute. Okay, good afternoon. Yes, how are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for the platform and for the training. Um, I appreciate the sacrifices they made. I have three questions, but because of time, I'll ask two. Um, first question is, um, when we use top 10, I'm trying, I'm finding it a bit difficult to understand the term top 10. So when we say top 10, um, what data do we expect as a result? Is it the first 10 data that was inputted into a table or the top 10 employee ID that has been um, ordered in ascending or descending order? Or what exactly is the output that we're supposed to expect when we say select top 10? Um, the next question is, um, um, Mr. Simons was asking a question about creating a view. So how do I save that view? Because this the um, statement he had written to create the view was so very long. I understand that the view is there so that you don't have to start typing that all over and all over again. How do I create that? And then um, a question that is particularly regarding work. So like in the VF program now, and we're trying to um, get details of employees that have done well for the month, for example, those that have worked in sales during the course of the year. So we're trying to find their sales year to date. And we're trying to find how long they've worked in a particular unit, in that particular sales unit, and how long they've worked in the company and their age. So the, the class we had today about get date, it speaks so much to answering that life question or that clause I've tried to think of um, so many ways during this class. And is it join that is going to be used for that kind of um, query? Or what kind of function would we use to get a particular kind of answer? So the question is, um, how I want to appreciate the employees at the end of the year, right in December. I want to know their sales here today. I want to know the units they worked 
whether they worked in sales units, from beginning of the year, they've moved between units in the beginning of the year, um, how long they've worked in the unit, how long they've worked in the company, and their current age. Um, those are my questions, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. What do you understand by year to date? Year to date is what you have sold from January till now. Okay. So there are two ways you can do that. You can just calculate, you can do a sum of what he has sold. You understand using the date from January of this year till, till the current date and sum them together. That is his sales of year to date. If you are in Power BI, there are Power BI has those functionalities that automatically calculate year to date for you. Okay, but year to date is what you have sold from the beginning of the month, from the beginning of the year till now. You understand? Month to date is what you have sold from the beginning of the month till the current date, adding them together. So you can use a sum, but all you need to do is you filter based on the year you are, you are looking for the year to date. That is one. Secondly, is uh, the, the year age, we have calculated it. We've shown you how to calculate the year. And if you want to see how long the person has worked, you now look at the start date of when the person has started and the get date. That is the date of his employment or date in that department till now. You look at the start date and you look at the get date and you see how long the person has worked. So I think those are how you can calculate your year to date, your month to date, and your age and your and your your age and and how long you have worked in, in, in that department. That was the last question. What was the other two? Okay, top 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 function. <clears throat> Top function just returns the number of rows for you. You understand? It doesn't you, you usually like regate it to just say uh, the top, uh, the top, the just the returns the specific number of records for you. It does not categorize it based on uh, your selecting top or the highest sales. You understand? In that case, you just now need to sum them, get the highest sales. And then you now say top that number of sales. But if you just use a top function as we've been using it, it just limits the number of rows in there. But if you now say top five sales, you understand, then it will now use the top to just calculate the, the top functions for you for that. But basically, top function returns the number of rows for you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Timothy. Let's go quickly. Um, so can we do what, 30, 30 seconds? 30 seconds for question, 30 qu seconds for answer so that we can you know, get through everyone else. Mario, I'll go for it, please. Good morning, once again. Thank you, Black Tech team. Um, Osita, my first question goes to you. Um, the January Data Immersion Program, does it cover Python? Because I heard um, Timothy just mentioned that um, Python, SQL, and um, and uh, probably Power BI are the very essentials, you know, to enter into the data analytics program. Then my second question goes to Timothy: um, Why you were running this um, this? Why you were working on the production dot uh, production cost history table? You used is in the where syntax for the end date. You use is null, but all along we've been using equal to sign for the where syntax. Why is it suddenly is? There are different. Uh, there are different uh, in uh, in the where syntax. I was just looking for for them for the we are okay <clears throat> when a data is missing that means it is null okay when a data is missing the system says it is null 
if I have a provision to put your email address and you don't have your email address, the system puts it at, as null. If I want to select people that does not have an email address, I say is null. If I want people that doesn't, that I want to select people that have email address, <clears throat> I will say is null. Uh, I, I will just say the is not null. If I say it's not null, that means give me people that have values. So once a system <laughs> doesn't have that record, the system puts it as null. And if you see on my screen, you're going to see them as null. The system puts it as null. So you cannot say equals to null. If you say equals to null, then it's going to be looking at this null as a word you have typed as null. But if the system has put in it as null, as unknown, as I don't have a value for it, if I want to select it, I'll say it's null. If I want the one that has a value, I'll say it's not null. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Great, um, great uh, response there. Uh, one second. So let me know if you can see my screen to answer your second question. So if you can see my screen, um, can you see my screen, Timothy? Yes. Okay, so for the second question that you asked, so this is the uh, flyer for the next uh, data analytics program uh, starting uh, January 14th. So you were asking if there's Python. Python is just a component that will be taken within the program. It's intensive, intensive program. Uh, so for some of you that attended our last program um, where we did a, a newcomer program, you will hear one of the guys that gave testimony. When he finished, he got three jobs, three, three jobs. He was literally looking for which one to take at the end of the program. So very, very intensive program. You start with advanced Excel from there to SQL. Then we move into Power BI for data visualization. Then Tableau, you guys are also going to have a few things on Tableau, but the more emphasis is going to be on Power BI and also the practical as well, because in this part of the world, that is what most organizations actually ask for. Then Python, Python is there as well. GitHub, where you can now create your project and portfolios. We work on live projects. Then of course, presentation skills. At the end of the day, when you finish with all this data, how do you present it, right, to stakeholders? How do you present it to your manager? How do you tell story behind the data? You guys will also learn all that as well. In addition to, of course, continuous support, mentorship, and all that, the resume review and interview preparation. That will be part of it because it's not just training. This, this particular program is focused on job. That is why we call it job-focused training, right? Look at it here. Be job ready in 14 weeks. That is the essence of the program, right? It's not about knowledge. What you guys have done in the SQL is knowledge to know. But this one is about job you want to get into data analytics. That is what the program is gonna do for you, okay? So there's so much to cover within the program, right? So that possibly answer the question and of course for some others that are also trying to get more information. Now we have three minutes. Jomi, go for it. Jomi, are you there? All right, yeah, I'm here, yeah. Um, well done, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, thank you, Mr. Sitan. Thanks. Um, in trying to um, use um, top two or top ten, we are trying to view the two um, the two top rows or the ten the top ten um, rows. But do we have any function for bottom? Like, if I want to view, like, um, say, bottom five or bottom ten, I know I can do descending, um, descending order. But what if the data type is not in? It? What if the data type is um, virtual? Yeah, that was my first question. The second question is, um, I noticed the academy doesn't have a DBA as a course. So um, what would you advise somebody who wants to go into DBA? Uh, what would you advise as a person? Thank you. OK, OK, we don't have that, uh, the bottom, the bottom clause that to select the, the bottom row. But if I want to do, something like that do i just want to select the bottom record or do i want to select the things that are not performing the the last the the bottom values i can manipulate it to 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 
to just select my my bottom okay nothing comes to my mind now but if i want to select it i should be able to find a way that i'm gonna select my last my last performing my last performing hat like you said i will just probably get to sort them descending and ascending you understand i can select based on that value and i select okay top three but by that time i would have aggregated it and i'll just say select top three you understand this i can nothing comes to my mind now but i can if i want the bottom three or the bottom five i can check it and if i can't remember it i can always uh always ask the big boss which is google mm, bottom records you can just look for bottom records in lean sql mm, bottom records in lean sql you, 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 Select oh. top and bottom rows. Can Timothy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, are you done with uh, with that response? Yeah, and then there is the other. There is the other one. Do you want to share your screen, Timothy? Are, are you trying to share something? Okay, no, I, I was just trying to share. Uh, like he was asking me on the bottom. Okay, but that thing will just. Okay, let me just let me just. If it's if it's if it's going to take time, then we can have one on one later on, right? Um, if it's going to yeah. take time, is yeah, it take... it's going to take time <laughs> okay. because what I will now do, I will do a row count and I'm going to rank them. I will yeah. rank everything there. You understand? Then now I use that ranking here to select the top five. There are a couple of ways I can go about it. So, but there is no bottom keyword, as in that you can use. Okay, that is fine. That is fine. Right. So let's Thank move you. quickly. Yeah. Um, okay. My second question, please. Yes. No. Your second, second question, question. No. is on the DBA. On the yes. DBA, if you want to do the DBA thing, okay, there are skills that you need. You need a little networking skills, okay, how to do computer networks. You understand, you to do computer networks, it's uh, most people have that goes more into, into admin is. There are courses for it. You can do SQL administration. You understand, or uh, at those old parts, it used to be MCSE. You understand, then you go to the administration, but it has to do, there's going to be a little networking, storage, and uh, and uh, SQL, SQL skills, but you're not going to be doing all of these select statements that we are basically doing. You're not going to be querying the sys objects and the sys columns and and the internal operations of SQL. Okay, but there are costs you can do if you want to go into SQL administration. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to Oki. Oki Nedo Blessing. Please make it brief. Blessing, she there? Let's go to Ebon. Ebon Oluwa, please go for it. Hello. Hello, this is Blessing, sorry. And um, please, I just want to ask a quick question on aliases. <clears throat> I don't see if I'm correct. For column aliases, we use AS, right? Why for table aliases, we don't use AS, we don't use the as sign, we just put the aliases beside the table, right? Our table is as. Hmm, you can still put as, they all work the same way. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, fine. Fantastic. Let's go to Evan. Evan, go for it, please. Hello, good morning. Thank you. Please, it's my query. I got my query correctly, but when I ran, just told me messages total time execution zero zero. Can I just share my screen for one second, please? Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Why you why you why you want to do that? Let's take Dis Sam. Oh, disabled particip participant sh screen one sharing. Second. One second, Sam. Okay. I will come back to you at the last person. Uh, Sam, are you there? I am. Thank okay, you. please go for your question, please. Make it quick. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. My question is regarding the assignment, the first question. I'm struggling with the accept a little bit, and I just wanted to understand the concept. 
when I saw the question, the first thing I thought was you're looking for columns where email address is null. And so I kind of got stuck thinking using where it's it's null. And I and I, I just want to use that as a comparison with the accept. Like what's the difference so that I can understand the accept properly? I know that the accept is supposed to draw out you know, information where something does not exist. And if you could just use the null in comparison to explaining what the accept actually means, and maybe that would help me to understand the first question in the assignment better, please. Like I said, you can play around. If I want to use a null, I can say I will use a, solo, a, a sub query. I can say select business entity from this table where the business entity ID is in, I will say select again as a sub query from the email where the email address is null. I'm using a sub query, which we did not have time to cover here. I'm using the is null. I can still get the same thing. I'm taking this table, joining it to this table, but in that new table I am joining, I am only wanting to see where the email is null, except I'm just choosing directly to just say, tell me what is here and that is not here. That is except, except. Tell me what is in here that is not here. And intercept, tell me what is in here that is here. You understand those are, those are, those are, are just basically how I can best select them. Except I don't know if I'm sharing my screen. Okay, my screen is still being shared. So if I say, okay, it's just gonna. Sorry, Timothy, you're not sharing. You're not yeah. sharing. Can you stop sharing and share again? We can't see your screen. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, okay. I can say select business entity. Okay, okay. Let me. I don't even know where that other queries I have. The table. Okay, which tables did we run on? Is business entity email and address right? Okay, I can say select business entity. I can say from this table, I can say where this business entity in, I can pass another select statement, say select um, business entity. from these other tables, the email can say where email ID, where email address, yes. okay, we are, where is that email? What's the other table's name? Okay, is person email, right? Okay, okay, where we say, okay, I'll say select from business person where business entity is in, select from Okay, I say we are email address. I can say it's not. Okay, I say select business entity from person to business entity. Where the business entity is in, 
I say select where this thing is not. If I run this, <clears throat> we are okay. Is in okay. Let me say is not null. And and let me see. Is is gonna okay. If I say where it is not null, okay, that means this one has. But if I say select where email is null, if I say select where email is null, that means I want to see all the whole business entity that does not have an email. And in that case, if, if I run that, it tells me there's no business entity without an email. Are, are you so? But if, if I want to say accept, I can run select business entity from this. I can say accept. I'm just looking at business entities that are, that are not here. I'll just say select that is not here. These are the business entities that are, are not here. Okay, these ones are not in, in here. And if I come in here, I just say select business entity from this, but my filter is the email is not null. Okay, basically, it, I can use a, a weird clause to try and I'm just gonna really review the data. But I can use a where clause to just say, what I want is the business entities where the email is null. So give me all the whole business entities, the email is, is null. There is no business entity, the email is null. But at the same time, it is not every business entity that is in the person's entity that has an email. But once the business entity is in the email, address he actually has an email you see they are giving me right right results but not exactly what i want this so, one timothy yeah. if you put um not in on the um, line two yeah not in okay yeah then you take the last where away okay no, okay. The line we can three. fine tune line three. Yeah. And put what? No, it's you remove not. that. You remove that. Just leave the bracket only. Okay. So you run it. It will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm using an EWA, uh, the we are clause to just say give me everything from business entity we are business entity is not okay thanks uh, thanks remy it is not then it is not here then it will give me the same answer if i still do accept it will still give me the same answer you understand so those are larger different ways you can you can play around with them Okay, thank you so very much, Timothy. And then the last lady, who was that? That was the last lady that wanted to just share for a second. Ebon, is Ebon, please, can you do that now? Uh, okay. Timothy, just a second. Can you stop sharing? Okay. Let's let's take Ebon. And that's the last question for the day, guys. Oh, the last um, question. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All the disabled participant sh screen sharing. Okay, one second. One second. Um, one second, Ebon. Try again. Uh, are you there? Can you try again? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. I want to do it now. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? I do. Yes. Yes. I ran. There's nothing I ran that, that came true. That the message I got was message is still execution time zero zero. Okay, let's start again. Okay. We're on line 10 to 11. Okay. 
that something is easier. Can you scroll yeah. up to okay, check if the server is up? Yeah, the server is okay. Server first is of, of all, adventure. okay. First of okay, all, this okay. Hold, okay, okay. Hold on. Let's okay. take it one at a time. Let's troubleshoot it. Okay. Copy that your code and uh, and paste it on the last line. Copy it. Paste it on the last line. Okay. Make a space. Make a space between the one. Uh -huh. Press enter. Okay, I want you to remove the first. Yeah, I want you to remove from birth date to date. Remove from birth day to yes, remove everything there. Or just comment it out. Just put dash dash. No, put dash dash to dash. Okay, before the dash, put asterisk all. Put asterisk, yes. Okay, run it. Run the last highlight it and run. Okay, I really think. Where is your result screen? Where is it's not showing result? result. Okay. It's, it's not, not showing okay. result screen. And it's never happened like this before. Go to your view and let's see what is in there. Go to your okay. view menu. Okay. And we say, um, Can you check the output? Click on okay. the output and let's see. No. What is can figure out what? Okay, can you just copy this code open again? Or just no, don't open, just go open another Azure. Copy this code and I run it, just open another Azure. Okay. No, not to query, not query, just open another instance. Go and click Azure again. Okay, okay. Let me copy the code first. Yeah. First open it. First open it. Okay. Okay. All right. And the uh, new query. Okay. Select the server and say connect. Okay, mm -hmm. go file and say new query. File. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Paste it. Change there. Okay, run it again. Let's see. It's fine. Just run it. Wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. So this is okay. this is this is actually this is actually the best way to wrap up this particular cohort. Okay. That, that, okay. That, that, wow. That wow. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's a Thank great, you. It's a wow. great way to wrap this up. It's a yes, great way. Wow. Be... <laughs> it's a great way to wrap this up. Thing. It's a great way to wrap this up. That yeah. wow. I love that. I love that <laughs> All right, fantastic. Yeah. All right, so everyone um, appreciate you guys for the incredible commitment. Everyone of you have shown from the beginning, uh, just like I keep reiterating, what we are trying to do basically is to, you know, again, there are things that we can deal with. There are things that we might probably will not be able to deal with. One of the things we know we can deal with as black tech, as an ecosystem, is to provide you with what learning. We'll provide you with information, guidance, things that will really help you to advance your career. And that's what we do, right? So it's not just SQL, name it, like all the programs you can think of in terms of in-demand area in tech today. Black Tech have got something for you with 45 faculties today, and of course, 11 programs. And we've been able to demystify things, you know, even those that think they are newbies, that they don't even know anything. 
You know, a lady said to me the other time, oh, sweet, I, I have no skills. I said, what do you mean by that? But by the time she finished through three months accelerator program, that lady is working with Deloitte today. Deloitte, a lady that said she has no skills. You know, so as long as you're a human being, you are breathing, trust me, you can do much more. Okay, most time we, we, we kind of underestimate our capability. Most time we underestimate what we can do as a people. But I want to tell you that as long as you are breathing, you are a human, you can do much more. We all can do much more. That is really one thing I want you to, to know. Okay, and please let us appreciate um, my incredible team, you know, working with me to make things happen. Remy, the program manager, Timothy, the um, the lead facilitator, Sesu, the co-facilitator. We have the other support team as well, Tunde, uh, Ayobami, Obeyemi, um, Kwame, Ebenezer. On the, on the chat, I think the chat is enabled now. I'm not sure. Can you check if the chat is fully enabled for everyone? Um, I think that is the case. If, if that is the case, please on the chat. Just encourage, uh, just encourage them. Appreciate them for the incredible work you know they have done. These guys, these guys have really committed a tremendous amount of time. You know, working, collaborating to ensure that we're able to bring this particular cohort. You know, to all of you. And I believe you guys have found this very, very valuable, right? Uh, for those that probably joined late and could not catch up, don't beat yourself too much. Uh, cohort three is coming early, early next year, okay? Look forward to it, but most importantly, ensure you join the community, uh, the Black Tech um, uh, Telegram community, so that you continue to collaborate. And of course, be aware, once anything comes in terms of any information, you'll be among the first people to, to be aware of that, okay? Thanks every one of you guys. And of course, guys, everything that have a beginning always have an end. Um, complete the evaluation form. It's been posted again by the program manager. Feel free to complete it, okay, by December 8th, please. If you don't complete by December 8th, don't call anyone in my team to say that, oh, I forgot to complete it, but I'm, no. We are not going to take that place. Make sure you do that now. I've mentioned this over and over again, okay? So let's try to do that. We work with time. Everything is planned and structured so that the thing can focus on the next thing, uh, which is the, the 14th uh, January program that is, uh, that is starting. And uh, remember to be part of the three days boot camp, 15th, 16th, 17th. Make sure you join and participate in that particular program. You'll be glad you did, especially if you are, you know, your interest is tech, but you are not sure, like which of the areas in tech, you, are, you don't even know. You just see a tech, but you don't even know what to do in tech. Uh, probably you are at income right now, you know that it's not a great income. You know that you can improve your income, but you are not even sure which of the areas, right? Please, you can actually what? Do that. It's possible for you to do that right now. Okay, register for the program, which has been shared right now on the chat as well. If you look at the chat, you can see the link there. Feel free to register for the TriTech Three Days program, okay? And let me, what I'm gonna do now, I will unmute everybody, you'll be able to talk. Uh, you can also enable your camera now if you want to. Um, we've done that, and again, I think I will probably just stop the recording as well. Um, so thanks everyone, thanks for the incredible commitment.